Ferragamo back to pass again. Throws into the end zone. Picked off. Sam Washington. Sam Washington was the man that was beaten on the long pass to Drew Hill. He makes amends right here as Ferragamo does not see him coming from the inside. Watch him break on the ball. Sam Washington right here. Not a good throw. It should have been thrown further outside as he was looking for Otis Grant, number 82. So, boy, Chuck Noll has the expression, you go from the penthouse to the outhouse in a hurry. That's what happened to Ferragamo. First and 10 for the Steelers at their own 30-yard line. David Woodley at quarterback. And Woodley goes back to pass on first down into and out of the hands of Rich Ehrenberg. Let's take a look at the Steelers on offense now, as it will be second and 10 from their own 30-yard line. David Woodley from Miami, Frank Pollard, Rich Ehrenberg, who is a rookie, John Stallworth, and Lewis Lips. The offensive line, Benny Cunningham, Ilkin, Wolfer, Webster, Wingle, and Brown. Webster, the 11-year veteran who hasn't missed a ball game in that period of time. Second and ten from the 30. And flags go down. Offsides against the Rams. It looked like it was in the middle of the line. 69 in Coachman. And it certainly was Greg Meisner who went to the University of Pittsburgh, a four-year veteran who was called for offsides. And Jim, if I had to characterize each of these offensive teams, I'd call them, I'd compare them to wounded birds, both of them flying on one wing. The Steelers can't run. The Rams have had trouble through the air. Second and five now from their 35. Hand off to Aaron Bird. And the young rookie gets up to about the 29-yard line, or rather the 39-yard line, where he's tackled there again by Greg Meisner. A look at the Los Angeles Rams on defense. Jack Youngblood, Meisner, and Reggie Dawes up front. The linebackers, Mel Owens, Carl Eckern, Jim Collins, and, of course, George Andrews. The secondary, Gary Green, the All-Pro, Leroy Irvin, Eric Harris, and Nolan Cromwell, another All-Pro. Third and one for the Steelers. Aaron Berg again. And it's going to be close for the first down as George Andrews, number 52, comes up and makes the tackle. And it is a first down for the Steelers. It's amazing when you think about the Pittsburgh Steelers and consider that Rich Ehrenberg is their leading rusher coming into this game with 17 carries for 65 yards. That time he just slipped a few tackles on the penetration by the Rams and got the first down. And not a very big man either at the 5'10 and maybe 200 pounds. And, you know, it's, it's kind of the running back that uh, you don't see these kinds these days. You see usually the big, strong guy, not him, but he's having a good season so far. First and 10 for the Steelers at their own 41-yard line. David Woodley at quarterback. Hand off to Pollard. He fights his way up the middle, picking up three or four yards. Tackled there by number 85, Jack Youngblood. Well, Ehrenberg and Pollard aren't exactly household names. When you think of the Steelers running back to the pass, of course, Franco Harris has gone out to Seattle. Rocky oh, Blyer, yeah. long retired. Abercrombie, Walter Abercrombie, a third-year player out of Baylor, is hurt. So they've really had problems yeah, running yards. the ball, Jim. They're near the bottom of the NFL in rushing, averaging only 83 yards on the ground per game so far. So it will be second and six for the Steelers at their 45-yard line. 11.45 to go here in the opening period. And Woodley goes back to pass. Going deep for John Stallworth. Covered there by Leroy Irvin. Good coverage by Leroy Irvin against the All-Pro and John Stallworth. And a big rush by Jim Collins on Woodley there. Made him throw the ball a little bit sooner. But Irvin had great inside position on Stallworth. Yeah, there was a little bumping along the sidelines, but that was really jockeying for position. You know, you're talking about uh, Jim Collins putting uh, pressure on Woodley. I think we will probably start to see some of that a little bit more from the uh, from the Rams on defense today because they really don't get a great deal of rush from their uh, up front three down linemen. Five defensive backs in now for the, for the Rams. Third and six at the Steelers' 45-yard line. Ehrenberg, the only back in the backfield. Lewis slips in motion. Woodley's back to pass. Here comes the blitz. Woodley goes deep. Out of bounds in 
intended for Weezy Thompson. Coverage there by Eric Harris. And Jim, exactly what you said. They came with the blitz. It got there a little bit late. Weezy Thompson, six feet, six inches tall, the rookie out of Florida State. They tried to get it up high to him along the sidelines, but it was good coverage by Eric Harris. Fourth and six, punting formation now for the Steelers. Craig Colquitt will be in punting formation for the uh, Steelers. Henry Ellert and Leroy Irvin back for the Los Angeles Rams. Gets a Steeler bounce and goes out of bounds about the 14-yard line, and that's where the Rams will take over first and 10. So the Los Angeles Rams, who had an interception on a big drive right now, there's no score in the game. The Steelers nothing, and the Rams nothing. Along with John Dockery, I'm Jim Hill. John Robinson, coach of the Rams, smiling now. He wasn't smiling a little while ago when Sam Washington picked up a pass by Vince Ferragamo in the end zone to kill a drive. Now the Rams have the ball at their own 14-yard line, first and 10. to pass again. Toss is on the flat to Eric Dickerson. Dickerson sheds the tackler and goes out of bounds, shedding uh, Brian Hinkle there. He's driven out of bounds about the 18-yard line. So let's take a look at the defensive alignment for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Keith Willis, Gary Dunn, and Keith Gary, the three down linemen. The linebackers, a great core here. Mike Merriweather, David Little, Robin Cole, and Brian Hinkle. And they tell us that uh, Merriweather could be the best ever. In the secondary, Woodruff, Washington, who made the interception, Donnie Shell, the veteran, and Rick Woods. Second and six for the Rams. Toss back to Dickerson. Cut back to the inside. Brought down about the 21-yard line by Gary Dunn and David Little. And you mentioned uh, David Little making the tackle there and a great cutback runner, Eric Dickerson. Little, of course, is subbing for the injured Jack Lambert out for the last couple of weeks weeks with a bad toe. And the pressure's on David Little because of that cutback running of Eric Dickerson and the domination of Dickerson in terms of the Rams running attack. He is the main force back there. Certainly, as remember, yesterday Little told us that he had doubted his performance or that he could play, but now that he's filled in for Lambert, he's confident and ready to go. He'll get a good test this afternoon. Third and six at the 20 for the Rams. Booming in motion. Paragamo back to pass. Wayne Woodruff. Pass intended for Henry Ellis. They came with the pressure and the blitz. When a quarterback's having his problems, much like Farrell Gamos has been having for this season, you know a defense is going to come with pressure, much like Cleveland did last week. Think we'll get it right here. Merriweather outside, little inside. The ball's a little underthrown, a little bit late, but he can't hold on to it. Woodruff had clear sailing had he made the interception. Fourth and two for the Rams. John Misko back to punt for Los Angeles. And Lewis Lips, the exciting rookie for the Steelers, is at his own 40-yard line. Good high punt by Misko. Great special teams by the Los Angeles Rams going down to make the tackle. Mark Giroux. So that's where the Steelers will take over. First 10 minutes, 22 seconds left in the opening period. No score between the Rams and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers have the ball first and 10 at their own 39-yard line. David Woodley at quarterback for the Steelers. Hand off to Ehrenberg. And Rich Ehrenberg, the rookie from Colgate, is tackled by Jim Collins and George Andrews after picking up about five yards. Other scores today, uh, these are some first scores that we're reporting. Minnesota over Atlanta, 27 to 20. And it is Chicago defeating Green Bay, 9 to 7. Chicago still 3 and now 3 and 0, oh, undefeated Chicago over Green Bay. Whew. The Bears and the Cubs in Chicago. Oh, that city is really, really on fire. Second and five from the 44. David Woodley at quarterback for the Steelers. And Woodley goes back to pass. Sacked by George Andrews. 
Once again, John, starting to see some blitzing from the Los Angeles Rams because we know that they don't have a great pass rush up front from their down linemen. And this is the one that the quarterback hates most. You know the awesome blitzes, the great outside, backside linebackers. Watch 52. He's never touched here. Woodley never sees him coming. Andrews makes the sack. Woodley lucky to hold on to the ball. The only guy that can pick that up is an interior lineman who might peel back much the way San Francisco did a few years again ago against Lawrence Taylor. Five defensive backs in for the Rams. Three wide receivers for the Steelers. Third and 12 at the 37. Here's Woodley back to pass. Good protection. Dropping it off to Frank Pollard. Pollard there tackled by Charles DeJanet. That will bring up a punting situation for the Steelers as Craig Colquitt comes in for his second punt of the afternoon. So the Steelers really not being able to do much from an offensive standpoint while the Rams have been frustrated going down the length of the field and having a pass picked off uh, uh, down there on an interception thrown by Vince Ferragamo. Not a very good punt by Colt, but there is a flag on the play as Henry Ellard makes the catch at the 25-yard line. And as we both know, John, that's something that uh, Chuck Noll really is not happy with, his special teams, and in particular his, uh, his punting. Yeah, they've had some returns. He's not satisfied with it. He kept them out of practice on Saturday much longer than normal, almost an hour and a half on special teams, and Chuck doesn't like that. He believes a player... Kicking team 94 was down the field illegally, declined a penalty. First down going the other way. So, so Terry Echoes was call for the infraction. There's a timeout on the field. 8.32 left in the first period. No score between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Los Angeles Rams. First and 10 for the Los Angeles Rams at their own 25-yard line. No score in the ball game. 8.32 left in the opening period. Vince Ferragamo in for the Rams at quarterback. And he goes back to pass again. Good protection. Throws to the outside. And it is complete. Complete there to Drew Hill. And it becomes pretty obvious who they're going to work on. Number 41, Sam Washington, in his third year. They're going to work on him much like teams have been doing early this year. This time, it looks like Drew Hill is going to go on a takeoff. They completed that early, but instead he pulls it up and does an out. Ferragamo actually gets the ball there a little bit late, but Hill goes up and protects it for the reception. Not a great throw by Ferragamo, but has to be good for his confidence. Tackle there made by Sam Washington. So the Rams have a first and 10 at their own 44-yard line. Ferragamo all set to pass again. Throws downfield, intended for Henry Ellard. Incomplete. Knocked out of the bounds there by the veteran and Donnie Shell. That's where if you're a receiver like Henry Ellard, you want to go back to Ferragamo and say, get the ball there a little quicker. The seam is open. I need it sooner, or else I might be decapitated by number 31, Donnie Shell, who's one of the deluxe hitters in the game. And that's what happens here. He has it for a moment, and bingo. He was fumbling it because he knew Shell was coming over to clock him. Donnie Shell, the 11-year veteran from South Carolina. Otis Grant and Henry Ellard in at wide receivers for the Rams. Ferragamo back to pass again. Good protection. Down the middle of the field. Complete to Mike Kuma. So Ferragamo continues to throw the ball and at times throws very well. Tackle there made by Sam Washington. He went into the seam of the zone and got it there, but you saw a defensive player from the Steelers, number 41, go flying by, going for the interception. Of course, Washington had one already, but take a look at it again. Ferragamo looks for the seam. Good call. See on the left of your screen that number 44 fakes outside, gets the screen, and watch right there. See him go for the interception. That was number 31, Donnie Shell, not 41, Sam Washington. Completion first down. At the Steeler 27-yard line. Toss back to Dickerson. And Eric Dickerson, who was last season's Rookie of the Year, tackled there by David Little. And you know, Jim, you have to admire Ferragamo, Dickerson, and the Rams, and Robinson. They're going into the teeth of a problem. We all know how badly Vince Ferragamo has played coming into this game. He had a total of six interceptions, but yet what the Rams are saying is we're going to support our man. He's our general. He's the guy that took us there last year to the playoffs, and we're going to be behind him, and we're going to throw the ball and face the problem straight on. 
and while they are somewhat discouraged at having an interception in the end zone, they have to be pretty pleased because he's coming right back so far. Flags on the play. As the officials talk it over, Ben Dreif is the referee today. of booing here because number 81 David Hill did move but the tight end is allowed to move it was Keith Gary who jumped offside to make contact very good point and getting back to uh, um, Vince Ferragamo for a moment we talked to him last night remember sitting with him he seemed like a, a very discouraged deflated young man said you know what very honestly he said it I've been lousy for the last couple of weeks against Dallas and Cleveland but I saw a little bit of improvement last week. I'm going to go back to the basics, and I think I can pick up my game. Well, he has an excellent opportunity to get into the end zone here. Second and one at the Steeler 18-yard line. Vince Ferragamo. Hand off to Dickerson. And there's Dickerson. is hit at the line of scrimmage by Gary Dunn, number 67, the nose tackle. And to a man, when you talk about the Steelers, when you talk to the Steelers, they say, the man we have to stop is Eric Dickerson. All they can think about is number 29. They compared. Remember, we asked a couple of the guys, they said, well, who does he remind you of? And a couple of the guys said, a large O.J. Simpson. But it was interesting. Chuck Knoll didn't feel that way. He said, well, maybe a large Tony Dorsett. He has that kind of speed, that kind of acceleration. And some people even said uh, Jim Brown. But what a great comparison for a young man who's only in his second year in the National Football League. He's done some things in his short two-year career, Certainly hasn't he? Yes. Ooh, 1,800 yards last year. Irv Panky and Dwayne Crutchfield check into the lineup for the Rams. Third and one. Booman in motion. Toss back to Dickerson. Dickerson to the outside. Eric Dickerson brought down about the eight-yard line tackle there made by David Little. And Dickerson, I mean, he just slid through that crack, crack, but he got some help from number 45, Dwayne Crutchfield. Take a look at 44, the U-back, and 45, how they block for this man because they know all he needs is a crevice, and boy, he'll do it. And Gooman, right there, knocks out Dwayne Woodruff, and there you see, again, the lead block by number 45, Crutchfield. Dickerson does the rest. Mike Gooman, who is an excellent role player. He knows exactly what he has to do. He must go in there and make those contacts, make the block. And that's what he does and catch it, makes some big catches too. First and eight for the Rams at the Steeler eight yard line. Eric Dickerson in the backfield for Los Angeles. David Hill in motion. Toss back to Dickerson. And he smothered at about the seven yard line. That's one of the things, remember we were talking to the Steelers yesterday in their defense. They have always played well against good running back, which is nothing new to them. They've played against some great running backs throughout the year. Here's the final. The Jets really putting it to Cincinnati. 43 to 23. Well, the Jets felt they should have beaten these Pittsburgh Steelers. As you look at what New England did to Seattle today, a little bit of a surprise, of course, Franco Harris chasing Jim Brown's record. After Seattle had jumped off to a big lead. Second and seven from the seven-yard line for Los Angeles. Vince Ferrer down more quarterback. Ferragamo goes back to pass. Toss it to the outside. Incomplete intended there for Henry Elliott. I don't understand the coverage by Sam Washington. That's simply an out pattern. That's a touchdown if Ferragamo throws it well. Defensive back is sitting in the end zone. Jim, you and I both know. I know he's a young defensive back, but down by the goal line, you have to tighten up. You can't just give a guy a square out like he did to Eller there. It'll be a touchdown. Total yards so far. 140 for Los Angeles. Only 15 for the Steelers. Impressive, impressive when you consider the offense for the Rams in the NFL is last overall. Third and seven from the Steelers' seven-yard line. The fans now trying to get behind the Steelers' defense. Ellard in motion. Toss back to Eric Dickerson. Gets away from one tackle, but he is smothered. Robin Cole, who told us yesterday, he says, we are going to play well. He says, there's nothing really new. Remember, this is nothing really new for us to face great running backs. 
and they like to be. You mentioned Robin Cole. This is a fine set of linebackers, maybe as good as the old days. They like to be compared to those old uh, defenses. And watch them cut back here. But too much pursuit, too much scraping. That's been a trademark of Steeler defenses for years. Chuck Noll demands that kind of intensity. Mike Lansford in to attempt a 25-yard line with Nolan Cromwell holding. You saw it. It is good. So Mike Lansford completes a 25-yard field goal, but there is a flag on the play. And Ben Drive is talking with Nolan Cromwell right now. On the play. 3.27 left to go in the first period. 25-yard field goal by Lansford with the flag. Ben Drive talking it over with the other officials. And talking it over with the Rams, so it is apparently, the penalty is apparently against the Steelers. That's Jack Youngblood, one of the captains, and Cromwell, who is also another captain. Robinson's practically out on the field. He wants to know what's going on. I think the thing... that on field goal and extra point attempts, you cannot leave your feet and jump up in the air in attempt to distract or block an extra point or field goal. That's exactly what the penalty was. See if we can take a look at it again. We'll look for number 56, Robin Cole. Try to get a look at the penalty. That's Little jumping up in the middle. That's not the penalty. Hard to tell what exactly happened, but the fans here at Three Rivers don't like the call. So the Rams get a tremendous break with 3.27 left to go in the first period. The penalty there called on Robin Cole. Once again, the new rule is you cannot run and leave your feet to try and block an extra point or field goal. Three tight ends for the Rams. First and goal at the four-yard line. Play action pass. Toss into the end zone. Complete to Dwayne Quickfield for a touchdown, Los Angeles. Everybody in the stadium, every Steeler defensive player expecting to see number 29 up the middle, the great runner Eric Dickerson. What does John Robinson do? He says, oh, we're going to fake it and we're going to throw it for the seven points crutch field in the flat touchdown. Take a look at it from the ground level. Watch the fake. That's what makes it happen. Right here. Good block by Dickerson after the fake crutch field for the touchdown. You see Dickerson pick up Donnie Shell, number 31? If he hadn't picked him up, it would have put more pressure on Ferragamo. So Dickerson showing more and more that he is that complete back with a great block. Mike Lansford in now to attempt the extra point conversion with Cromwell holding again. Right down in the middle. So Mike Lansford kicks the extra point, and the Los Angeles Rams on a touchdown pass from Vince Ferragamo to Dwayne Crutchfield lead the Pittsburgh Steelers 7 to nothing. Will be Mike Lansford set to kick off for Los Angeles. Todd Spencer, number 36 from USC, back to receive for the Pittsburgh Steelers. 7 0 Rams, 322 left to go in the opening period. Spencer at about the 12 yard line. And Todd Spencer is brought down by the rookie, David Crowder. And that's where the Steelers will take over. First and 10 at their own 27 yard line. So late in the first period, it's the Rams over the Steelers, seven to nothing, and we'll be right back in just a moment. The Pittsburgh Steelers trail the Los Angeles Rams, seven to nothing. David Woodley at quarterback for the Steelers. First and 10 at their own 28 yard line. And Woodley goes back to pass. Good protection, complete to Edinburgh. And the rookie from Colgate. Gets away from Jim Collins, and he's finally tackled by Nolan Cromwell. Aaron Berg is just one of those backs that has the good balance and the instincts. He's very small at 5'10", 200. 
But the Rams said they were worried about him coming out of the backfield. Here he makes two men miss. Collins misses, and then watch Irvin, number 47, come by. He makes him miss and gets a couple of extra yards before he's dragged down by Doss with good pursuit from his defensive end position. Enough yardage for the first down. First and 10 at the 39-yard line for Pittsburgh. Hand off to Pollard up the middle. And Frank Pollard breaks two or three tackles before he's finally brought down by Reggie Doss. The Steelers openly admit that they do not have a very potent running attack. They really don't, Jim. I mean, when you look at their rushing, they're 25th in the NFL, averaging only 83 yards a game. That won't cut it. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Steelers and the National Football League is prohibited. Second and five. Woodley goes back to pass. Tosses into the flat to Ehrenberg. And he's knocked out of bounds there by Leroy Irvin. Again, Ehrenberg bounces off and gets those extra few yards because Irvin doesn't wrap his arm. I mean, a good defensive back comes up there and slices him or knocks him back, but Irvin just, for the second play in a row, did not wrap his arms, did not put the solid hit on Ehrenberg out of the backfield. Very safe play. They're playing zone. Cornerback comes up, but still, a couple extra yards for Ehrenberg. A lot of people comparing Ehrenberg to Rocky Blair, and that's a heck of a comparison this early in his career. Third and one at the 48. Quarterback sneak. Woodley stopped there by Jim Collins. And it looks like he has enough yardage for the first down. And it is. Of course, we all remember Woodley at Miami where he was the great scrambler. Actually, in the Super Bowl three years ago, here he says, I'd rather not run the ball that much. I'd rather let my runners do it. I'd rather put it up in the air and score points that way. Of course, that will help a quarterback's longevity. Yes, absolutely. He has that ability to scramble, but he'd rather hand it off to someone. First and ten at midfield for the Steelers. Hand off to Ehrenberg. Good defense by the Rams. Carl Ecker, number 55, and George Andrews, number 52. How about that lead back by Frank Pollard, huh? He chopped down Eric Harris, who was coming hard. Even though there wasn't much gain, it was a fine block. And you mentioned this defensive team. Not an awesome pass rush, a legitimate set of linebackers, and a fine set of defensive backs. So, yeah, we expect to see more blitz. They have to put pressure on Woodley because he has one of the top passing games in the league and great receivers in Lips and Stallworth. Second and ten at midfield for Pittsburgh. And Woodley goes back to pass. Good protection. Throws out into the flat. And it's complete and dumped by North Lips. Recovered there by Los Angeles, number 55, Carl Ecker. So Lewis Lips, the fine rookie who many people are comparing to Lynn Swan, makes the reception, but he fumbles and Los Angeles recovers. What a nice throw by David Woodley. He throws it over the linebacker into Lewis Lips' arms, but Lewis takes some hit. And I think it's Car Gary Green, number 27, coming right there. Makes him cough it up. Of course, Green, the all-pro they got from Kansas City. And there's the recovery. Rams get another break. The Rams defensively, behind such plays like that by Carl Ekern, have played relatively well throughout the course of the year. And they just come up with another big turnover. First and 10 at the Ram 47-yard line. Ferragamo back to pass again. And he's dropped for right at about the line of scrimmage at Nelson number 64 and Brian Hinkle number 53 in on the tackle. Good coverage then by the Steelers secondary, which forced Ferragamo to get out of the pocket and try to run. Fifty-nine thousand fans on hand here at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, along with John Dockery. I'm Jim Hill as we begin the second period with the Rams leading the Steelers seven to nothing. And John, the Rams are really going to work on the Steelers secondary. They are alternating their wide receivers. Olympic gold medalist Ron Brown is in. Vince Ferragamo at quarterback. George Farmer also in. And Ferragamo goes back to pass. Pumps once. 
gets away from one tackler, but he can't get away from the rest of the Steelers' defensive line. Ed Nelson gets in and makes the final tackle. Well, the Steelers will use Nelson, the third-year man out of Auburn, in that rush, that four-man rush up front there to get a little more pressure on Ferragamo. They're a little bit surprised, I think, by the game strategy of the Rams. Take a look at them right here. See the blitz there by number 56, Robin Cole? That gives the defensive lineman a little time. He can't find a receiver downfield. Ferragamo tucks it away, finally knocked down by Edmund Nelson, number 64. Third and four from the Ram 43-yard line. The Rams now in the shotgun formation, something this year that has been newly put in and kind of new to Ferragamo. Doesn't like it. And he doesn't like that either. Into and out of the chest of Eric Dickerson. Eric Williams there in on the tackle. And Eric Dickerson, of course, didn't catch many passes in college, but has developed some hands here with the Rams. Ball is on the money. Dickerson just dropped him. And look at his reaction. Eric is a man who seeks perfection. That not exactly what he wanted. John Misko in punting formation for the Rams. Lewis Lips back to receive for Pittsburgh. Low snap. Wobbly punt. Lips at the 23. Lewis Lips brought down by Ivory Sully, who always, com always comes in and makes a major contribution to the Los Angeles Rams on special teams. So with 14-12 to go in the first half, it's the Los Angeles Rams leading the Pittsburgh Steelers 7 to next Saturday right here on CBS College Football. Top-ranked Nebraska going against the 7th-ranked UCLA Bruins. The Bruins are going for their third consecutive Rose Bowl victory. No other team has ever won three straight. Well, they better be ready when they meet Nebraska. Of course, yesterday Nebraska buried Minnesota 38-7. And people are saying, well, what about the quality of opposition for UCLA? They better be ready next week quality game going on right now. The Steelers and the Los Angeles Rams. Hand off to Aaron Burke. And the young rookie from Colgate picks up about five or six yards. Tackle there made by Jim Collins. Look at this. A final. The defending Super Bowl champion Raiders come from behind to defeat Kansas City 22-20. to Detroit over Tampa Bay 7-0 in the second quarter. San Diego leading Houston by two touchdowns. San Francisco over New Orleans by 10 points in the second period. And it's Washington over the Giants 13 to 7 in the second quarter. Second down here, handoff to uh, Ehrenberg. Tackle there made by Jim Collins again. They must grow those running backs up at Colgate. Rich Ehrenberg, of course, the rookie late round draft choice for the Pittsburgh Steelers out of Colgate. And remember Marv Hubbard? Mark Van Egan, all of those running backs, not awesome physical ability, but somehow an instinct to run the ball, and that's exactly what Rich Ehrenberg has. Look at this score here. Woo. How about that 67 points scored? St. Louis finally nipped Indianapolis by one. Philadelphia losing to Dallas, 3-0. Dallas looking to get back on the road after losing to the Giants last week. Third and three here for the Steelers at their own 39-yard line. Woodley goes back to pass. Complete to Aaron Burke out of the backfield. Tackle made by Nolan Cromwell. Give this reception to Aaron Burke because he has an option of going outside and inside. He reads it well. Woodley has enough time to hold the ball. Nolan Cromwell is covering him well. Woodley, watch here, gets good protection. That's Webster, number 52, knocking down. He goes back inside. Cromwell had great coverage on him, but the quickness by Ehrenberg makes that reception. We all know that Ehrenberg is the best receiver among the backs for the Steelers coming out of the backfield. They want to get it from that way. Woodley back to pass again. Complete the lips. Lewis lips. Brought down by Carl Eckern, Nolan Cromwell, and Gary Green again. If I were a defensive back, I would be sure to give Lewis Lips a big cushion because he's got that great speed, he has uncanny know-how, and that's exactly what the defensive back is doing right here. 
giving him the big cushion. That's Gary Green. He catches the little turnaround. How many times have you seen Stallworth and Swan do that over the years? Just to hook Jim, get the good gain, make almost nine yards on the play. The cushion because the Rams were in a zone defense right there. The Steelers read it perfectly, just completing a little hook pass. Second and one from the Ram, 37-yard line. 11 minutes, 20 seconds to go in the first half. Hand off to Frank Powell. Tackle by Reggie Doss as he picks up enough yardage, it looks like, for the first down. When you talk about the cushion in Lewis Lift, I'd give him a cushion too because he leads the NFL in receiving yards with 260 yards and his average is 26 yards per catch. That is all. Awesome. And you know, you talk about Lewis Lift, people are saying, well, it's he's a new Lynn Swan. He said, I take that as a compliment and I'd love to be like Lynn Swan but in my own way. But there'll never be another 88. Oh. Not at all. First and 10 at the 35. Hand off to Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr showing great athletic ability before he's brought down by Jim Collins. And Aaron Burr is a one-man gang here. We mentioned, and the Steelers feel it, and so do the Rams, that they don't have a dominant back, much like they had over the years here in Pittsburgh with Franco Harris. Aaron Berg and Pollard are very average talents physically, but somehow they get it done. The problem is the offensive line also. Remember yesterday, John Robinson said because of the trapping ability of the Steelers, he fully expects to see the Steelers pop a couple of mm -hmm. 10 or 15 yards. Second and five. Whitley back to pass. Complete to Aaron Berg. Slips one tackle, but he can't get away from two others. Collins again in on the tackle along with Leroy Irvin. So the Steelers are going to try and make a steady diet out of uh, Rich Ehrenberg this afternoon. Not only him running the ball, but more importantly, him coming out of the backfield and catching passes. Exactly. And, and this is the second year in a row the Pittsburgh Steelers have started with a new quarterback. Cliff Stout was the quarterback last year because Bradshaw was injured most of the year and for all intents and purposes was gone. Now it's David Woodley taking control. Weezy Thompson. Six foot six inch rookie from Florida State checks in. The Steelers have three wide receivers. And Woodley's back to pass. Throws down. Completes the more flip. Lord flips. Knocked out of bounds at the six yard line by Gary Green. Which we just got through talking about his big play ability. That's good for 22 yards. And his ability to come back to the ball. That was the difference there. Green didn't see him. Right there. See number 27 bumping him around. Right here. He loses sight of the ball. Lips does not come back for it and makes the reception. And of course, Green is the man they put on the slot. That is the toughest coverage on the field for a defensive back. First and six from the six-yard line for the Steelers. 8.35 left to go on the first hit. And you get the feeling that David Woodley and the Steelers have control of this game at the moment. A nice balanced attack. They flip the ball out in the flat, get a good gain, then they throw it down, field to lift, and then they give it on the draw up the middle to Aaron Burke. Nice balanced attack, keeps the defense off balance. You know, it's kind of, and you, we've both gone through this situation. Woodley's now 8 of 11 for 74 yards, where sometimes you go into a ball game and they say, well, you know, they don't have the week here or week there. And that particular point is the one that comes back to haunt you in that game. Second and goal for, from the one for the Steelers. Today we talked to him in the locker room and he told us, he said, I sure wish they would throw the ball to me, to me a little bit more. And remember, David Woodley said, Cunningham has got to be a big portion of our offense against the Rams, and he certainly was then. Gary Anderson in to attempt the extra point conversion for Pittsburgh. And it is good. But there is a flag on the play. A flag on the play. Thank you. 
On the offense, number 56, the defense was offside. We're going to play it over. Offsetting penalties. So Anderson will come in again to try and tie the game up. David Woodley going to Benny Cunningham for the touchdown. And here's the extra point conversion. It's good again. This time it counts. So with 7.47 left to go in the first half, after a touchdown pass by David Woodley, the game is tied. With a touchdown pass to Benny Cunningham, the Steelers go 68 yards, 10 plays, use up 6 minutes and 25 seconds. Tied at 7. Gary Anderson set to kick off. Barry Redden to receive for the Rams. Redden at the goal line. And Barry Redden has dropped at about the 20-yard line of the Los Angeles Rams. Tackle there made by Mike Merriweather. So the Rams will take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Seven minutes and 38 seconds left in the first half. First and 10 for the Rams at their own 20-yard line. Score tied at seven. Vince Ferragamo back to pass. Good protection. Complete to Mike Kuhlman. Kuhlman tackled there by Mike Merriweather and David Little. So Mike Kuhlman, who we talked about being an excellent role player, getting a pass from Ferragamo, and there's a penalty on the play, preliminary holding. That's the call against Los Angeles. And that's one of the been the problems with the offensive line and for the Rams, Jim. Offensive holding number 72. They've had five sacks in two games so far this year. And last year, they only allowed 23 sacks. That was the best in the NFL. They were tied with Miami, so this is a good veteran offensive line, but watch the holding, number 72, Kent Hill, holding right there, Robin Cole, the linebacker, of course, is a mismatch, a real quick linebacker on a big offensive lineman, always causes them problems. First and 20 from the 11 for Los Angeles. And off to Dickerson, he fumbles it! Dickerson gets back on the fumble. Gary Dunn in on the tackle for Pittsburgh. They talk about Vince Ferragamo and all the problems he had. In fairness to him, and he wasn't looking for alibis when we talked to him last night, the offensive line has been having trouble with their protection. It's a whole new set of wide receivers with Ellard and Hill and Grant and Brown and Farmer. And you look at that right there. Total offense, second quarter. The Rams have just shut down their offense, minus six yards. Second and 26 from the Rams' five-yard line. Three wide receivers in for Los Angeles. And Ferragamo is back to pass from his own end zone. set to kick off for the Steelers. Drew Hill back deep for the Los Angeles Rams. Ball 
ball goes into the end zone where it will come out to the 20-yard line for a touchback. And Jim, you and I both know to be a good defensive back, you must have vision. You must be able to see the receiver, but you also must be able to read the quarterback. Somewhere along the line, number 41, young Sam Washington, has learned that trait. He's able to see the quarterback and the receivers. He breaks on the ball here, seeing Gooman inside. Great ball reaction, slides on the ground, doesn't stay there, gets back up, takes it into the end zone for the touchdown to put Pittsburgh ahead. The big difference in that particular play, Washington playing the ball, going to it, Gooman was standing there waiting for it to come to him. First and 10 for the Rams at their own 20. Hand off to Eric Dickerson. Dickerson fights his way up to about the 25-yard line. Keith Gary, number 92, there in for the tackle. It'll be an interesting set of circumstances here now. Do you close up your tent and crawl into a hole if you're Vince Ferragamo? Do you go back to giving the ball to Eric Dickerson and getting it on the ground to get some confidence? Or do you try to put it up and do something through the air? I don't think you really would fold up your tent right now, but you gotta give the ball to Dickerson a little bit more. Take a little bit of pressure off Ferragamo. Second and five. Intended and complete to Drew Hill. Tackle there made by Dwayne Woodruff, but there is a flag on the play. Defensive. Looks like some kind of a personal foul. It might have been number 57 walking away from the ball. I think you're right, John. I saw Ben Drive pointing to uh, Mike Merriweather. It was interesting. Merriweather was trying to get out of the action so they wouldn't point him. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 57. Elbow the head of the quarterback. That's it. But did you see after he did it, he tried to get out of the area and say, no, not me, I didn't do it. And he tried to hide, but you can't hide out there. Penalty gives them a first down close to midfield. So the Rams really get a big break out of that. It is a big, big break. And that is the second penalty that's gotten the Rams out of trouble. Of course, the penalty on the field goal allowed them to score the touchdown early to Crutchfield from That's right. First and 10 at the Ram, 48. Ferragamo back to pass. Here's the blitz. Incomplete intended for Mike Goomer. Mike Merriweather, who just was called for the uh, personal foul, goes in and puts the pressure in on Ferragamo. The pass was incomplete. That time... Not a good pass by Ferragamo. Mike, it was completely behind uh, Mike Goomer. Might have rushed it a little bit. And we both know that Vince Ferragamo has an outstanding arm and is a good quarterback. But boy, when your confidence in the way is waning, you're a totally different athlete. Ferragamo, 6 of 13, 132 yards. One touchdown, one touchdown and two big interceptions. Hand off to Dickerson. Smothered in the backfield by Merriweather. Robin Cole also in on the tackle. And that doesn't certainly help the situation when you see your star, Eric Dickerson, who's been able to run about against just about everybody, smothered like that by the Steeler defense, forcing you to throw the ball with third and 12, third and 13. Well, the Steelers readily admit that they really like to rise to the occasion from a defensive standpoint when they're going against a big, famous, outstanding running back. And it's interesting, in only nine players in 112 games have rushed for 100 yards or more here at Three River Stadium. So you're right, they do shut down the big back. Rams in the shotgun formation, three wide receivers, third and 12 from the 46. More pressure. Ferragamo stops again. Ed Nelson. Boy, when the Steelers get you in a position of knowing you have to pass, there Nelson up the middle from the outside John Goodman number 95 just back from a groin pull and here's the punt by Misko Mark Flips at the 14 Lips tripped up by Mike McDonald number 63 for Los Angeles and also David Crowder but there is a flag on the plate So this young, feisty Steeler defense, who really likes to admit that they like to be compared to the old steel curtain, 
penalty against the Los Angeles Rams. Illegal receiver downfield. Donnie Shell. An eligible man downfield on the offense. Also, they had too many men on the field kick it over with a five-yard penalty. That always helps your coverage a little bit when you get an extra couple of guys out in the field. But you see Donnie Shell, he said, make him kick it over again. We have Lewis Lips. He just might break them. John Misko in punt formation for Los Angeles. Be careful when you have a dangerous punt returner like Lewis Lipscomb. Making the Rams kick again. Maybe thinking that the coverage team might get a little weary going down two times in a row. Flag on the play. Roughing the kicker. And Lewis Lips is smothered at about his own 19-yard line, but that doesn't make any difference. Number 78 as the Steelers, like roughing. As the Steelers are called for roughing the kicker. And the Rams, once again, John, get another big break out of it. Another big break. Mark Catano, number 78, looked like the uh, culprit. Personal foul, 78 defense running into the kicker. Five yards and a first down. But, Jim, they came with pressure. They had 10 men up on the line of scrimmage. They were coming after Misko. And watch number 78, left side of your screen, he gets blocked, he goes into the kicker, there's the penalty. A silly penalty by the Steelers gives the Rams new life, and certainly Ferragamo, with the state of his mind right now, needs every opportunity he can get. First and 10 for Los Angeles at their own 38-yard line. Ferragamo just now coming onto the field after getting last-second instructions from John Robinson. And his team has been trying to pick him up over the last few weeks. Remember the image of him being carried off the field by his teammates after they beat Cleveland? Four minutes, 18 seconds to go at halftime. Eric Dickerson, the lone setback for Los Angeles. Toss back to Dickerson, looking for some place to go. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Ryan Hinkle and Dwayne Goodrum. Steelers know that contain is what you have to do against a great back like Eric Dickerson, and that's exactly what they get. You look at the outside of your screen, way to the left, right here, you see Dwayne Woodruff, number 49, taking the outside leverage. And Ferragamo is out of the ball game right now. And Jeff Kemp, number nine, is in. So Vince Ferragamo has left the ball game. Looks like he's injured of some kind. We'll get a report on that in just a couple of moments, but Jeff Kemp is in. And Kemp goes back to pass. It's knocked away there by Sam Washington. Well, it's interesting that Kemp, fourth year out of Dartmouth, hasn't played much, goes right down town and tries to beat Sam Washington. So we don't know exactly what the story is with Vince Ferragamo. It looks like the doctors are over there looking at his right hand right now, but uh, Kemp goes in on his first attempt. He puts it up in the air. It's almost interception, but Ellard, watch Ellard come back over the top of Washington right there, gets his hand in, knocks it away so it's not intercepted. from the Rams' 33-yard line. Jeff Kemp at quarterback for Los Angeles. Dark play to Dickerson. And Eric Dickerson fights his way up to about the Los Angeles 41-yard line. So the Rams will have to punt. Vince Ferragamo on the far sideline is being looked at by Dr. Robert Curlin, the team physician of the Los Angeles Rams. And John Misko comes back in to punt. Three minutes left in the first half. The Steelers leading the Los Angeles Raiders 14 to 7. And Misko gets off a of beauty. Looks at the nine. Finally brought down by David Cotter. like he is going into the dressing room with two minutes and 40 seconds left. So Ferragamo, who had a, uh, an injury to his knuckle on his right hand in late preseason after he tried to make a tackle on an interception, is leaving the game right now. 
and the Steelers lead the Los Angeles Rams 14-7. We'll be back. is in at quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but the big story of this game right now, Vince Ferragamo has gone in to have x-rays taken of his right hand. Ferragamo hurt the, the knuckle on his right hand in preseason when he went over to make a tackle after an interception. We'll have an update on those x-rays for you as soon as we're able to get them. First and 10 for the Steelers at their own 30-yard line. Play action pass. Woodley going deep. Complete to John Stallworth. Stallworth brought down by Nolan Cromwell. And what Stallworth does better than most receivers, even though he's been in the league for 11 years and he was injured most of last year, is come back to the ball. He does not need the perfectly thrown ball, and that's the kind of thing Woodley appreciates. He comes back to the ball away from the defensive back here and makes the reception. It's well thrown. But Stallworth certainly helps out right there for the reception. 11-year veteran who owns four Super Bowl records. First and 10 for the Steelers at their 47. Hand off to Ehrenberg. Ehrenberg gets to the outside. Knocked out of bounds by Nolan Cromwell and Leroy Irvin. So the Steelers, who aren't supposed to have a very potent running attack, all of a sudden are running on the, on the Rams just about whenever they want to now. It says the Rams do not have a great defense against the rush. They're ranked around ninth to 10th in the league, but they're a decent defense. Right now, though, you sense that the Rams are deflated. They've lost their starting quarterback. It's time that the defense, if they're going to stay in this game, pick them up right now and shut down the Steelers. But the Steelers are driving. They have the ball first and 10 at the Ram 38-yard line, 224 to go in the first half. David Whitney, the quarterback. He goes back to pass. Complete to Stallworth. Stallworth tackled by George Andrews, but there is a flag on the play. Flag on the play at the 40-yard line. As John Stallworth, who was injured last year, makes another reception. Here's the call. Two men on the defense were offside, declined the penalty. He had all day to throw that ball, David Woodley did, and that's the reason he completed it. You can't let Stallworth run around the secondary that long. He's going to find a hole. So Woodley right now is hot. You feel it. And that's his reputation as a quarterback, too. The Rams told us he's either hot or he's cold. Two minutes and 10 seconds. Two minutes and 11 seconds left now in the first half. The Steelers are driving. First and 10 at the Rams' 26-yard line. David Woodley at quarterback. by Eric Harris, but there is another flag on the play. Ehrenberg gets down inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. This time holding against Pittsburgh. So once again, a penalty. Offensive holding, number 61. Penalty called on Blake Wingle, but once again a penalty called against Pittsburgh, which really enables the Rams to temporarily dodge the bullet. Scores around the National Football League. Detroit over Tampa Bay, 14 to 7 in the second quarter. It is San Diego leading Houston, 28 to 7, also in the second quarter. And Dallas leading Philadelphia, 6 0, also in the second period. A couple of field goals, a 51 yarder by Septian, a 47 yarder by Septian. First and 20 for the Steelers at the Ram 36. Woodley back to pass. Ball is thrown and is complete to Lewis Lick, but there is another flag on the play. Flags are thrown at the 40-yard line, holding again against Pittsburgh. That's their sixth penalty of the afternoon, and we're only in the second quarter. Pittsburgh Steelers have no problems with penalties. Offensive holding, number 79. This time it's against Larry Brown. Well, Larry Brown is going against all-pro Jack Youngblood, number 85. And what experience on that side. A 14-year veteran like Larry Brown. Remember when he was a tight end? When I was here playing in the Pittsburgh Steelers, he was a tight end. And Larry said, that kind of experience as a tight end, the quickness and speed required has helped me. But he has a load today with Jack Youngblood.
so the two-minute warning has been given with the score the Pittsburgh Steelers leading the Los Angeles Rams 14 to 7 Turned a very concerned John Robinson on the field however we just noticed that Vince Ferragamo has come back onto the playing field we will get a report for you on the x-rays of his right hand there is Ferragamo his right hand which was uh, which was severely bru bruised in a preseason contest so as far as the Rams are concerned, they certainly hope that the X-rays were negative and that he can get back in there. But the Steelers have the ball. First and 30. Woodley back to pass. Trying to complete a screen pass, but Carl Eckern is right in the middle and knocks everybody down, along with George Andrews. And the second quarter has been all Pittsburgh Steelers, Jim. The offense this quarter, Pittsburgh, 110 yards on offense. This quarter alone, Los Angeles has been shut down totally, minus three yards. So you talk about them needing Ferragamo. They need Ferragamo. They need Dickerson. They need something. First of all, they need the ball. Yeah. And it's second and 30. At the Ram 46-yard line, David Woodley, who has thrown one touchdown pass this afternoon, that one to Benny Cunningham. And Woodley goes back to pass again. Complete to Cunningham. Tackle there made by Eric Harris. So David Woodley, who told us yesterday that he has to get Cunningham back into the offensive philosophy because Cunningham has been uh, mostly used as a blocking tight end, and he feels like his talents have been wasted somewhat, comes up with a big play. First timeout. So the Steelers call a timeout. It is their first of three here in the first half. The Steelers leading the Rams 14 to 7. Coming up at halftime, scores and highlights, and also legends of the game. Remember number 22 of the Dallas Cowboys, Bob Hayes? Do I remember? I remember a long day down in Dallas when I had to cover Bob Hayes, man to man, bump and run the entire helped to run me out of the league. Oh, you you chased him like I did, huh? What? Uh, you chased him like I did. Oh, he was something else. What speed? There's Vince Ferragamo along the sideline. He will not return. The report we get that he's fractured the pinky on his right hand. He has an ice pack on it, as you see there. He will not return. So it's young Jeff Kemp, quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams. This is the... The second straight year that Ferragamo has suffered a hand injury. Last year, late in the season, he had a, a big cut between his little finger, the last two fingers on his passing hand. Now he, he suffers a fracture on the little finger on his right hand, and what a tremendous blow to the Rams. And all of a sudden, there's another young man on the spot. Right now, third and 17 for the Steelers. Woodley goes back to pass. Tackle there made by Leroy Irvin. The Steelers call another timeout. That's their second of three timeouts. John Stallworth just runs away from Leroy Irving. He did have some time. Woodley did right there. He gets good protection. Stalwart tries to cut back right here, but Irvin gets off the ground and makes the tackle. It's short of the first down, so they're going to go for the field goal. So Gary Anderson will come on to attempt the field goal with 124 left in the first half, and we'll be back in just... It's kind of strange. You think that the Steelers would call the time up? I think they might have been uh, not known exactly where they were on the field. They might have thought they had the first down, but instead they didn't let the clock run down like they probably should have. 37-yard field goal attempt by Anderson. Off to the right. So Gary Anderson, who yesterday, remember we talked yesterday, we saw him kicking him right down the middle from 55, 60 yards out, and I said, hey, listen, be careful, it's different on game day. Jim, he missed three last week. He's having his problems after being a pro bowler last year and probably the best place kicker in football. It's only 5 of 10 for field goals this year. Coming up September 29th, right?
Back to throw an interception and give the Steelers something else you want to go in and regroup. John Robinson does into the locker room at halftime. 50 seconds left in the first half. The kicks going back to pass. Good protection. Down the middle, complete to Henry Eller. Tackle there made by Rick Woods. And now the Rams are signaling for a timeout. Shows you how much I know. He comes out throwing a fourth-year man out of Dartmouth. Gets a completion and a first down, moves the ball upfield. And what a lift it would be if they could put something on the board before the half. You know, this is one of the reasons why Jeff Kemp is the number two quarterback for the Rams. Throughout the course of the preseason, there was some concern as to who would be the, the, the quarterback, the backup quarterback for the Rams. That was a big story. Jeff Kemp knows the situation. Uh, he knows the Rams' philosophy inside out. And there were similar situations throughout the course of the uh, of the preseason where Kemp was in this exact same spot. I remember specifically doing some games in the preseason. Into the first half, two timeouts. Uh, you have to go the length of the field, get you behind. Here it is right now. And at that particular time, Kemp did it. He marched the length of the field and got a score on the board. And it's a real credit to the philosophy of John Robinson saying, OK, let's go for it. We're not going to play conservatively and just sit on it. We're going to give our young quarterback a chance to show what he can do. Detroit leading Tampa Bay at the half, 14 to 7. Gary Danielson and Sims, of course, doing well. San Diego ahead of Houston, 28 to 7. That also at the half. Obviously, Warren Moon not doing much. Other scores, San Francisco over New Orleans, 17-7 in the second quarter. And one other score, Philadelphia leading Dallas by one seven. Ron Jaworski came back with a 16-yard TD pass to Mike Quick, but Dallas still having their problems. Five defensive backs in now for the Steelers, as they are backing up deep, not wanting to give the Rams anything behind them. First and 10 at the Rams 42-yard line. And Kent goes back to pass. Here comes the run. Forced out of bounds by Ed Nelson, number 64. 26 seconds left on the clock. And boy, does that help an offensive line and a quarterback when he has the ability to scramble to get away from the rush. That time, number 93, Keith Willis was bearing down on Kemp. He dodged him, took it upfield, got out of bounds, saved the timeout. But all it really tells you is that there is great secondary by the Steelers because Kemp had to get out of there and run and was forced out of bounds. So it will be second and 14. Line. The Rams trail the Steelers, 14 to 7. Vince Ferragamo out with a fractured right little finger. He will not return. Back to pass. Pass in the play to Dickerson. And Eric Dickerson is brought down short of the 45-yard line. There, the tackle is made by Brian Hinkle. A good idea. You have a great running back like Dickerson. It's a safe pass as they take a timeout, L.A., with 16 seconds left. But try to get the ball to Dickerson in the flat. It's safe. See if he can see if he can break the big one. If there is one thing, one positive thing for the Rams out of this whole situation as far as having Ferragamo not coming back into the ball game, that is, Jeff Kemp is a young man who knows, and we, as I mentioned before, he knows the Rams' offensive philosophy. He, um, he went through a very tough period of time in, in the preseason. Uh, in a, the second preseason game uh, against the uh, San Diego Chargers, uh, he came out, did not play well. He threw a pass that was picked off for an interception and it was run back. Uh, he threw a couple of other bad passes. But then he started to really progress after that game against the Chargers in the preseason. And he's really had, a, when you look at his career, a very spotted career. 1981, he only threw the ball six times for 25 yards. 82, he was injured most of that year. 83, didn't get much playing time. And right here, he's in the heat of action in game three, an important game for the Rams. This is a critical juncture. These Rams have to figure out how good they are. I mean, they played very average opposition, got buried by Dallas, they beat Cleveland, and now they're here against a tough Steeler team. 16 seconds left in the first half. Back to pass again. Throws downfield over the head of Drew Hill, covered there by Donnie Schell. Good presence of mind, though. Jeff Kemp knew he wasn't going to go very far running the ball with the Steelers pursuing, so he kept his presence of mind, tried to get the ball downfield. Had he completed it with nine seconds left, they would have called the timeout and had a shot at the field goal. 
But you could see that uh, the Rams have confidence in Kemp. They didn't go into a shell. They tried to uh, move downfield. Fourth down now, John Misko into kick for Los Angeles. The Steelers don't have anyone back. Ball hits at about the 18-yard line. Takes a Steeler bounce before it is tipped there. By Mike Wilcher. And that's the end of the first half. Vince Ferragamo, quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams, will not return. He suffered a fracture of his right little finger. And you know, it's, it's really amazing how throughout the course of the Rams in the last, oh, four or five years, their quarterbacks have had a history of hand injuries. Ferragamo today, Ferragamo last year with a, with a severe cut in his hand. Pat Hayden a couple of years ago uh, broke a finger as he hit it on the, on the helmet of, uh, of one of his offensive linemen. Touchdowns for the Jets. England trails Seattle 23 to nothing. They find Tony Easter to win it 38 to 23. Minnesota wins for the first time under their new coach Les Steckel, 27-20 over Atlanta. The Raiders in Kansas City. This was the most dramatic game of the afternoon. Just inside of five minutes. The Chiefs are on the move against the toughest defense in the NFL. Herman Hurd gets the corner turn, and Kansas City takes the lead. Then Irv on first and ten. Raiders took charge. You know they're going to do it. Plunky goes deep to Malcolm Barnwell, who steps out on the five-yard line with a 42-yard game, which sets up the game winner. On fourth down, Chris Barr gave him the game winner, an 18-yard field goal, 22-20, and now the Raiders are 3-0, and the Chiefs fall to 2-1 on the season. The Chicago Bears, three Bob Thomas field goals. They beat the Green Bay Packers 9-7. Detroit at the half, leading Tampa Bay 14-7. At the half, San Francisco over New Orleans 17-10. At the half, San Diego beating Houston 28-7. Three rushing touchdowns by Ernest Jackson. And, of course, Pittsburgh and the Rams are at the half. You're watching that one, 14-7 Steelers. The Redskins leading the Giants 13-7 at the half. And Philadelphia and the Dallas Cowboys. Right now, the Cowboys have just gone ahead. Hogaboom hits Ron Springs, and the Cowboys lead it 13-7. The NFL Today continues on CBS after these messages from your local station. Back in the early 60s, before they became America's team, the struggling Dallas Cowboys drafted an Olympic champion whose dazzling speed helped transform them into winners. And today, Irv Cross begins a new season with his series, Legends of the Game, and the story of the man they call Bullet Bob Hayes. In the 1964 Olympics, the USA relay team trailed by nine yards until their anchor person turned it on down the stretch. The race was won, and an American Olympic hero was born. soon became part of America's team. And for NFL defensive backs, the reality was quite simple. If you let him get away, he was gone. Never before had the NFL seen a man with the speed of bullet Bob Hayes. I think I brought a dimension into pro football where the coaches, they had to find a solution. So uh, I'm thinking in terms of zone defense, more or less, was uh, originated because of me. Unlike other track stars, Hayes had pass-catching skills to go with his world-class speed. And his 76 career touchdowns still stand as a cowboy record. You had the, the, the big wide receivers and, you know, the, the, the Warfields and the Gary Collins and those guys that I consider, you know, real great wide receivers. And I don't know where I would place, but hopefully I would place among those guys. No doubt the name Bob Hayes is there. Bob Hayes retired from pro football in 1974. In 1979, Hayes went to prison on a drug charge and served a 10-month sentence, an event that cost him his status as an American hero. Bob, you're an Olympic champion. Did the U.S. Olympic Committee try to get a hold of you to have you participate in the games in Los Angeles? No. Have they forgotten Bob Hayes, they, they, too? They, Bob Hayes was forgotten in that area. Uh, and I'm a big yeah. boy. You know, I'm not feeling sorry for myself because I didn't get out there, but what I accomplished in the Olympics, you know, I think is second to none. You know, coming from behind nine yards in a relay and you are winning, and you were timed in an eight, four to eight, six seconds. I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's phenomenal. 
And you know, those, those memories linger on. And when the Olympics comes around in Los Angeles, I want to be a part of it, associated with it. If it's just sitting out there watching, you know, looking or commentating or asking questions, anything. At a preseason game in Texas Stadium, Dallas fans welcomed the 1984 USA medal winners. And only a pint-sized gymnast from West Virginia received more applause than a forgotten hero. he mingled with were two generations removed from his achievements they all knew the legend of bullet bob hayes so i've seen you play run you were one of the greatest of all time thank you for my pleasure thank you for having me in his sleep i think spider lockhart is still trying to catch bullet bob tell me Herb, did you ever get beat deep by hayes never never we always doubled him and i played the short zone <laughs> All right, let's send you back to the game now that you're enjoying on CBS. Halftime at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Steelers leading Los Angeles Rams 14 to 7. And big breaks have really been the story of this game. Big breaks for the Rams, which allowed them to take a 7 to nothing lead. However, the Steelers also get some big breaks. They come back and they score two touchdowns as they lead at 14 to 7. But, John, of course, the big story right now, Vince Ferragamo will not return because of a fractured little finger on his right hand. And that could be the season for the Rams. I mean, they have young Jeff Kemp backing him up fourth year out of Dartmouth. Certainly not the veteran you need to step in and take a team to the playoffs. After that, it's Nolan Cromwell. So I would expect the Rams are probably on the phone right now trying to shop around for a veteran quarterback. Let's talk just for a couple of seconds about availability of quarterbacks. I'm sure you have some ideas. You know what jumps into my mind right away is when you look at the New York Giants, Phil Simms has taken over as their quarterback. Jeff Rutledge is a backup. He was with the Rams. He knows the system. He might become available because of young Hostetler out of West Virginia. The Giants are high in him, so they might be able to pry him loose. There is another possibility. I heard Tom Landry, the Dallas Cowboys, say that he's going to have to make a move, or he should make a move with one of his two quarterbacks as soon as that situation stabilizes down in Dallas. Right now, Gary Hogeboom is a starting quarterback. Maybe Danny White would become available. Well, they could use someone like Danny White. We know how critical the quarterback situation is position is in the NFL. You have to have one. And of course, the Rams want to win now. They're not thinking about the future. And it just have to, you have to question whether Kemp can do it, even though before this Ferragamo wasn't exactly having an outstanding season. So the Los Angeles Rams with Vince Ferragamo, their starting quarterback, out with a broken right finger, his little finger. They trail the Pittsburgh Steelers by a score of 14 to 7. We'll be back with the beginning of the second half in just a moment. John Robinson, head coach of the Los Angeles Rams, going into his second full season as their head coach has a major problem on his hands right now and that major problem is a hand the right hand passing finger the little finger of Vince Ferragamo who will not return he fractured his finger this afternoon in the first half Jeff Kemp is on the spot he is the quarterback and the Rams right now do not have another backup quarterback as they trail the Steelers 14 to 7 at halftime Robinson definitely has a problem. Of course, the Steelers have, have solved their quarterback problem with David Woodley. They just feel that he can do the job. He's won the job just because he puts points on the board. And that's a quote from Chuck Noll. So there is a quarterback problem for the Rams, and the uh, Steelers seem to have solved there. Next Sunday, there's another exciting NFL doubleheader on CBS Sports. In the first game, you'll see either San Francisco at Philadelphia or Washington at New England or the Los Angeles Rams at Cincinnati, followed by the Green Bay Packers at Dallas or the Chicago Bears as they take on the Seattle Seahawks. Boy, I love that Chicago Bears-Seattle game. Walter Payton and Franco Harris chasing the ghost of Jim Brown. And boy, I talked to Franco. I had a little, little time with him, of course. Leaving the Steelers was traumatic for him. He was so down and depressed, I couldn't believe it. And to see him in a Seattle uniform wearing number 34 is just something that jars the mind. You're so used to him performing at such a high level for all the years, number 32 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But boy, next week it's Peyton and Franco. It all starts with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern time right here on CBS. You have to feel for this man. Doesn't your heart go out for him? He's battling all those problems. He was booed. And finally, he doesn't get a chance. He breaks his finger. Oh, He's tough. had one problem after another. The Steelers lead the ball game, 14 to 7. Mike Lansford, all set to 
kickoff for the beginning of the second half. Todd Spencer back deep for the Steelers. And our second half is underway. Spencer at the goal line. And Todd Spencer is brought down about the 17-yard line tackle there made by Mike Welcher. And I can imagine John Robinson in the locker room saying, okay, guys, we got a bad break. Ferragamo's gone. Kemp's our man. It's time for all of you other fellas to pick it up. You see Jack Youngblood, take care of things. Cromwell, make it happen in the second half. Stuff the Pittsburgh Steelers, get the ball back for us in good field position. First and 10 for the Pittsburgh Steelers at their own 17-yard line. David Woodley at quarterback. Elton Beals is in the backfield now for the Steelers along with Ehrenberg. And handoff goes to Ehrenberg. Rich Ehrenberg brought down by number 52, George Andrews.
from West Virginia received more applause than a forgotten hero. athletes he mingled with were two generations removed from his achievements, they all knew the legend of Bullet Bob Hayes. I've seen you play, run. You were one of the greatest of all time. Thank you, Mr. Larry. My pleasure. Thank you for having us. In his sleep, I think Spider Lockhart is still trying to catch Bullet Bob. Tell me, Irv, did you ever get beat deep by Hayes? Never, never. We always doubled him. That's Lady Short Zone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's send you back to the game now that you're enjoying on CBS. Time at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Steelers leading Los Angeles Rams 14 to 7. And big breaks have really been the story of this game. Big break for the Rams, which allowed them to take a 7 to nothing lead. However, the Steelers also get some big breaks. They come back and they score two touchdowns as they lead at 14 to 7. But John, of course, the big story right now, Vince Ferragamo will not return because of a fractured little finger on his right hand. And that could be the season for the Rams. I mean, they have young Jeff Kemp backing him up fourth year out of Dartmouth. Certainly not the veteran you need to step in and take a team to the playoffs. After that, it's Nolan Cromwell. So I would expect the Rams are probably on the phone right now trying to shop around for a veteran quarterback. Let's talk just for a couple of seconds about availability of quarterbacks. I'm sure you have some ideas. You know what jumps into my mind right away is when you look at the New York Giants, Phil Simms has taken over as their quarterback. Jeff Rutledge is a backup. Or he was with the Rams. He knows the system. He might become available because of young Hostetler out of West Virginia. The Giants are high in him, so they might be able to pry him loose. There is another possibility. I heard Tom Landry, the Dallas Cowboys, say that he's going to have to make a move, or he should make a move with one of his two quarterbacks as soon as that situation stabilizes down in Dallas. Right now, Gary Hogeboom is a starting quarterback. Maybe Danny White would become available. Boy, they could use someone like Danny White. We know how critical the quarterback situation is position is in the NFL. You have to have one. And of course, the Rams want to win now. They're not thinking about the future. And it just have to, you have to question whether Kemp can do it, even though before this, Ferragamo wasn't exactly having an outstanding season. So, the Los Angeles Rams, with Vince Ferragamo, their starting quarterback, out with a broken right finger, his little finger. They trail the Pittsburgh Steelers by a score of 14 to 7. We'll be back with the beginning of the second half in just a moment. John Robinson, head coach of the Los Angeles Rams, going into his second full season as their head coach has a major problem on his hands right now and that major problem is a hand the right hand the passing finger the little finger of Vince Ferragamo who will not return he fractured his finger this afternoon in the first half Jeff Kemp is on the spot he is the quarterback and the Rams right now do not have another backup quarterback as they trail the Steelers 14 to 7 at halftime Robinson definitely has a problem. Of course, the Steelers have, have solved their quarterback problem with David Woodley. They just feel that he can do the job. He's won the job just because he puts points on the board. And that's a quote from Chuck Noll. So there is a quarterback problem for the Rams, and the Steelers seem to have solved theirs. Next Sunday, there's another exciting NFL doubleheader on CBS Sports. In the first game, you'll see either San Francisco at Philadelphia or Washington at New England or the Los Angeles Rams at Cincinnati, followed by the Green Bay Packers at Dallas or the Chicago Bears as they take on the Seattle Seahawks. Boy, I love that Chicago Bears-Seattle game. Walter Payton and Franco Harris chasing the ghost of Jim Brown. And boy, I talked to Franco. I had a little, a little time with him, of course. Leaving the Steelers was traumatic for him. He was so down and depressed, I couldn't believe it. And to see him in a Seattle uniform wearing number 34 is just something that jars the mind. You're so used to him performing at such a high level for all the years, number 32 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But boy, next week it's Peyton and Franco. It all starts with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern time right here on CBS. You but have to feel for this man. Doesn't your heart go out for him? He's battling all those problems. He was booed. And finally, he doesn't get a chance. He breaks his finger. Oh, He's tough. had one problem after another. The Steelers lead the ball game, 14 to 7. Mike Lansford all set to kick off for the beginning of the second half. Todd Spencer back deep for the Steelers. And our second half is underway. Spencer at the goal line. 
and Todd Spencer is brought down about the 17-yard line tackle there made by Mike Welcher. And I can imagine John Robinson in the locker room saying, okay, guys, we got a bad break. Ferragamo's gone. Kemp's our man. It's time for all of you other fellas to pick it up. You see Jack Youngblood? Take care of things. Cromwell, make it happen in the second half. Stuff the Pittsburgh Steelers get the ball back for us in good field position. First and ten for the Pittsburgh Steelers at their own 17-yard line. David Woodley at quarterback. Elton Fields is in the backfield now for the Steelers along with Ehrenberg. And handoff goes to Ehrenberg. Rich Ehrenberg brought down by number 52, George Andrews. So if there was ever a time when the, when the Rams really need to rally together, they need to start it right now. And, it, and there's no better way really to start it than with your defensive unit. The defense holds now. Give the Rams a ball in relatively good field position. And give young uh, Jeff Kemp some room to work with. But they have to get it away from the Steelers. Second and nine. Ball at the 18-yard line of Pittsburgh. Woodley back to pass. Going deep to Stallworth. Knocked out of bounds by Nolan Cromwell. It's hard to figure out why Nolan Cromwell was so late getting to that ball. He was playing the deep zone. Irvin was playing up short. He must not have read the quarterback. Because Woodley, he's looking away, but he comes back right now. Perhaps he thought he was going to throw the sideline. Would you see Cromwell come from the middle and get there late? John Stallworth with the reception picks up the momentum for Pittsburgh. That played good for 31 yards. It gives the Steelers a first down at just about midfield. David Woodley at quarterback for the Steelers. Aaron Berg and Elton Beals in the backfield. Play action pass. Over the head of Lewis Lips. Coverage there by Gary Green. So the Steelers looked like they were a little bit confused on that particular play. Woodley now is 14 for 19 for 158 yards and one touchdown. That, of course, going to his tight end in Benny Cunningham. I was just going to say that's probably the first bad ball that I can remember Woodley throwing this afternoon. He just he got away from him. He threw it over the head of Lewis Lips, who didn't have much room anyhow. Second and 10 for the Steelers now. As they lead the Rams 14 to second, our second half has just gotten underway. Hand off to Beals. He's tackled by Reggie Dawson, Jack Youngblood. That's what I was talking about, taking control of the line of scrimmage, making something happen, penetrating. That's what the uh, defensive line of the Rams did that time. They penetrated, got across the ball, and made the tackle. Ouija Thompson and Frank Pollard check in for the Steelers. The Rams now have five defensive backs and Ivory Sully number 37 comes in third down conversions the Steelers are four of seven flags on the play Woodley back to pass complete pass the middle of the North Lips Lips break the tackle Mississippi. But remember, there is a flag on the play. Finally brought down by Eric Harris, number 26. John, this is amazing. Once again, it looked like a penalty. Against the Rams. This Against time. the Rams this time, and it is declined. So now the snowball effect is starting to take place, I think, in this in this ball game. You lose your starting quarterback. Pittsburgh comes up and completes a big play. You get a penalty tacked on to that. Now the Steelers have the ball deep in Ram territory. And watch this. You see Gary Green, number 27, trailing Lips. He gets inside. Now, Gary Green is one of the best cover men, but tough on bump and run. Lips gets away from him. Coughs up the ball there, but pulls it back in so the Rams do not recover. Lips four catches for 66 yards. Hand off to Elton Fields. Tackle made by Reggie Doss. It's a tough situation for the Rams, as you allude to. Right. At this point, you need a defense that's dominant to take control of the game. They haven't been able to do that. Woodley's been mixing the pass and the run and completing it. 
One stealer is slow getting up. That's Rich Ehrenberg, their young rookie from Colgate. And you know, one of the reasons why he may be get, might, why he may be hurt is he's not that big. And if you keep pounding in there and pounding in there, maybe it'll catch up with you. And maybe that, and I think that's just what's happened now. So with 12:48 to go in the third period, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers 14, the Los Angeles Rams. Ehrenberg on the sidelines for the Steelers. We get the report that he's got a finger stuck in his right eye. He's been replaced by Scoop Gillespie. Second and nine for the Steelers at the Ram 19-yard line. Elton Beals in the backfield for Los Angeles. For uh, Pittsburgh, really. And there's movement by Los Angeles and flags on the play. And, Jim, this is a revamped Pittsburgh Steelers team. They have 17 new faces from their playoff team at the end of last year. Ben Drive, the referee for today. Including five of those new players are running backs. Beals, Corley, Gillespie, Spencer, Ehrenberg. And now the crowd is getting just a little edgy because they want the officials to come on and uh, make a decision here as to what the penalty was. And it's against Pittsburgh, and you know they don't like that. But I mentioned all those new players is that we just saw Elton Beals in there. We saw Scoop Gillespie. And Chuck Noll is trying to find some kind of a combination in the backfield while he waits for the return of Walker Abercrombie. And he's angry. Chuck doesn't think it should have been on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Second down and 14. So it will be second and 14 for the Steelers at the Ram 24-yard line. Chuck Noll knows this is a big, big drive here for his ball club. David Woodley at quarterback. And he's back to pass. Going deep down the middle. Over the head of number 89, Benny Cunningham. Leroy Irvin there defended. So Outstanding coverage by Leroy Irving and no pass rush. And that's the biggest problem the Rams have had. Cunningham is really getting his work today. As he told us yesterday, he really wants to get back into the offensive philosophy, but Leroy Irvin has had his, he's had his hands full as well as the rest of the Rams' defensive unit. Of course, without Gary Jeter, he was the man who had six and a half sacks last year for the Rams, they really don't have an overpowering defensive end to rush the pass. Weezy Thompson checks in for the Steelers. The Rams now have five defensive backs in, third and 14. Woodley goes back to pass again. Here comes the rush. Throws into the end zone. Out of bounds as the pass was thrown to Weezy Thompson. David Woodley getting away from Nolan Cromwell and Jack Youngblood. Throws into the end zone. It was complete but out of bounds to, to Weezy Thompson. Well, they're trying to come with pressure. They don't have a normal pass rush, so they send number 21, Nolan Cromwell. Take a look at it right here. Comes on the rush, and he's the one that's chasing Woodley. He's waving some players upfield. Knocked out of bounds. Gary Anderson, Anderson, who missed the field goal, is in now for a 41-yard attempt. Craig Colquitt is in to hold. He does not miss this one. 41 yards right down the middle by Gary Anderson. And the Steelers take a 17-7 lead over the Los Angeles Rams. The Pittsburgh Steelers leading the Los Angeles Rams. 17-7. The Steelers go 60 yards, 9 plays, time of possession, 256. Capped off by the field goal. Gary Anderson is all set to kick off. Drew Hill at the five-yard line. And Drew Hill is tackled there by number 50, David Little, who is a starting inside linebacker, participates on special teams, and is making major contributions this afternoon all the way around. So now Jeff Kemp, who is replacing Vince Ferragamo. Ferragamo will not return. He has a fractured little finger on his passing hand. The Rams are down. Kemp is in. They have the ball first and ten at their own 21-yard line. Huh, there's an interesting graphic. Have not scored a point in the third quarter.
That's Kuman in motion. And Kip is back to pass. Complete to David Hill. And David Hill is brought down by David Little and Robin Cole. A good idea there. Throwing to the tight end is a much easier pass to complete than throwing wide to the outside receivers. David Hill is a man who's got good speed, can get open. It's a good idea by Kemp to go there. But even more important, I think, when you look at the statistics in the first half, Eric Dickerson carried the ball 13 times for a mere 19 yards. Did not have a good half last week against uh, Cleveland either, but in the fourth period, he came on when it counted. Hand off this time to Dickerson, and he's met by a host of Steelers. David Little again in on the tackle. Remember, David Little was a young man who we talked to yesterday. He said that, you know, I'm not, I know I'm not that big. I'm not as big as other linebackers in the league. But he said, I know I can play. And he's doing it. Certainly is. And so is that man, number 50, replacing Jack Lambert, of course, the 11-year All-Pro for the Pittsburgh Steelers. This man in his fourth year out of Florida, David Little. And Jack Ham, when he came by the booth a moment ago, said, you know what? These linebackers may be as good as the linebackers from those Steeler teams in the mid-70s. Quite a compliment from Jack Ham, who played on those great teams. Certainly is. David Little, the brother of the all-pro offensive guard Larry Little, who played with the San Diego Chargers. And, of course, he got most of his... Uh, fame with the Miami Dolphins. Isn't he a head coach down at Bethune Cookman? Bethune Cookman doing a heck of a job down there, we understand. Little brother David playing here for the Steelers and playing well. Remember yesterday we said little, he said no, no, I'm younger brother, <laughs> which I understand perfectly. So it will be third down now. The Rams are, are a bad one of seven in third down conversions. Third and less than one. Dwayne Crutchfield checks into the backfield along with Eric Dickerson. Quarterback sneak by Kemp. And it appears that he has enough yardage for the first for the first down. Keith Gary in on the tackle along with Robin Cole. And a good surge from the middle of that offensive line. Doug Smith, Dennis Hara, Kent Hill, all veterans, all big and strong, help them to get that first down. Scores in the National Football League. Tampa Bay and uh, Detroit tied at 14 all in the third quarter. New Orleans and San Francisco tied at 17 all in the third quarter. And the Giants leading Washington 14-13, that in the third period also. But here, the Rams trailing 17-7. Hand off to Dickerson, cutting back, but right into trouble. Donnie Shell up there, David Little, Robin Cole. And those linebackers talked about having to put control on themselves, almost a muzzle on themselves to not overrun the cutback of Eric Dickerson. These are great pursuing linebackers for the Steelers. They're all over the field. But here with a runner like Dickerson, you have to control and play the cutback. And they're doing it. Second and eight for the Rams at their own 35-yard line. Dickerson 15 carries for only 24 yards. Toss back to Dickerson. There's the cutback again. Eric Dickerson over the 40-yard line. Tackle there made by John Goodman. You know, it's, 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 it's really a, a thing that they really have to be careful of because you can hold him down, hold him down, hold him down. All of a sudden, he can pop a big one on you. This is what he did against uh, the Cleveland Browns last week. He was held uh, for under, I guess it was 25 or 30 yards in the first half against the Browns. But when the Rams really needed that drive in the fourth quarter, they went to number 29, and he got it for them. He's been carrying this team. He got 138 yards versus Dallas, 102 versus Cleveland. But Dickerson's been the main part of the Ram offense to this moment, except for the first half today. Third and two from the 41. Hand off to Dickerson. Spins his way, crossing the 41, 42-yard line, but not enough yardage for the first down. Keith Gray and uh, Gary Little. Gary and Little in on the tackle. Gary. Tell you, that Little has been all over the field this afternoon, and one of the things that the Steelers have done with him is that Little is the inside linebacker, and they always put him on a tight inside because they know that most of the time that's where the Rams run, and that's where Dickerson will be. So the Steelers hold fourth and one at the Ram 42-yard line. John Misko in to kick for Los Angeles. Lewis Lips. To receive for the Steelers. Yeah. 
Misko gets up. A, not a very good kick, but he gets a Los Angeles roll. It's kicked by, by Mike McDonald at about the six or seven yard line. Mike McDonald, number 63, and going down to cover the punt, accidentally kicked it about the six yard line. And that's where the Steelers will take over first and 10. So with the score, the Steelers leading the Los Angeles Rams 17 to 7. We'll be back. Chairman of the board of the Pittsburgh Steelers, a grand gentleman he is, Mr. Art Rooney. The man they call the chief with the ever-present cigar. Boy, was he upset by Franco Harris leaving. Said it was uh, the toughest thing he's ever gone through in his life, including his personal life, seeing Franco leave. With Mike McDonald kicking the ball into the end zone, it comes out to the 20-yard line. That's where the Steelers will take over first and 10. David Woodley at quarterback. Elton Fields and Rich Ehrenberg in the backfield. Woodley back to pass. Intended for John Stallworth. Covering there was Leroy Irvin. So it'll be second and 10 for the Steelers. It's David Woodley, who came from the Miami Dolphins to the Steelers, is uh, feeling right at home here. Feeling right at home, and they like him. I mean, they admire his covered courage. In the first game against Kansas City, he was not silly, got a concussion. He was questionable versus the Jets, but what does he do? He comes back, beats the Jets with three touchdown passes. He's a tough quarterback, and if there's anything respected in Pittsburgh, it's tough. Right now, he has the Steelers in front. Woodley's back to pass again. Here comes the rush. Flag on the play as Benny Cunningham and Lewis Lips were the nearest receivers for the Steelers. But there is a flag on the play. They're pointing at that offensive line. The preliminary call by Ben Dreif is holding. So once again, the Los Angeles Rams get some help because of a penalty due to the Steelers. Offensive holding number 61, decline a penalty, that third down. And because of the incompleted pass, the Rams declined the penalty, call there against Blake Wingle. Wingle from UCLA in his second year. Ouija Thompson, the big six foot six inch rookie from Florida State checks in as the Steelers now have five wide receivers, or rather three wide receivers in, and the Rams have five defensive backs in for them. Third and 10, ball at the 20 yard line of the Steelers. And Woodley's back to pass again. First intercepted by Eric Harris. Eric Harris, who did a great job of playing the ball, jumped in front of Lewis Lips right at the last second and almost had an interception. It's really an excellent thing when you have a, a defensive back like Eric Harris, who played cornerback for the Rams last year. That means he has the ability to cover one-on-one. -on -one. Here, great ball reaction. Cuts underneath right there on Lewis Lips. Almost pulls it down with one hand. Fourth and ten for the Steelers. Craig Colquitt in to kick for Pittsburgh. Leroy Irvin back to receive and Henry Ellard for Los Angeles. A good high punt. Ellard at the 27. Going up the far sidelines and just gets knocked out of bounds as he tries to turn the corner. So Henry Ellard, who has blazing speed, knocked out of bounds there by Randy Rasmussen. So with seven minutes and 38 seconds left to go in the third period, the Pittsburgh Steelers lead the Los Angeles. So Jeff Kemp from Dartmouth in his fourth year. Kemp today is 3 of 5 for 35 yards after replacing Vince Ferragamo, who suffered a fracture of his right finger, his right little finger on his right hand. Toss back to Eric Dickerson. Dickerson finding nowhere to go. Shifting gears. Finally brought down by number 56, Robin Cole. And if there's one man that can pick up this Los Angeles Ram team, it's that man, Eric Dickerson. I mean, Cole and those linebackers are all over the field, but Dickerson has the ability right there. It looked like he was going to cut back. He changed direction and got all of that yardage on his own. But without some kind of a passing game, Jim, it really puts an awful lot of pressure on Eric Dickerson to run the ball. Well, the Steelers have always played great running backs extremely well. And they're doing it again this afternoon. Under seven minutes left to go in the third period. Kemp hands off to Dickerson. 
He's hit in the backfield once again, Robin Cole. Sam Washington also coming in. Cole, who is an all-pro, moved from the outside linebacker into the inside position, told us yesterday he likes that he likes that spot because he really likes to be where the action is, and he's in on the action today. And that's the other defense is getting off the ball. Watch this rush right here. They're coming. It looked like they might even have been offside. Robin Cole, number 56, gets the penetration, brings down Dickerson. And you know, remember what Cole told us? He said, we don't do anything really special. We just all get up when there's a challenge of a great running back like Dickerson. Third and fourth of 43. Henry Ellis goes in motion for the Rams. And Kemp is back to pass. Here's the play. Throws downfield. And Drew Hill is going to score. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Lightning strikes. Jeff Kemp, who was almost sacked, showed his great scrambling ability. Going downfield, finding Drew Hill. Good for a touchdown, 57 yards. And chasing him was number 57 and number 56, Robin Cole, number 56, and 57, Merriweather. Two agile linebackers with great speed. One of the things that the Rams have always tried to do is quiet the crowd here this afternoon, and that's what they've done right now. But throughout the course of the preseason and the regular season, one of the things that... One of the things that they really wanted to do was to be able to come up with the big play. They have the speed. Remember, we talked to John Robinson. He told us the one thing that he wanted to do with this club this year was to get a deep threat, someone who could go deep. The Rams have great speed at the outside wide receivers, and it just paid off. 57-yard touchdown pass from Jeff Kemp to Drew Hill. Mike Lansford in to attempt the extra point with Nolan Cromwell holding. Straight and true. So the Rams come back behind a 57-yard touchdown pass. They trail it now 17-14. But Jeff Kemp showing quickness, agility, speed, and perhaps a little bit of fear with those big guys chasing him. Right here gets outside. Drew Hill downfield. The defensive backs come up. Presence of mind to continue to look downfield as he's being hit. Drew Hill makes the catch and then just turns it on. Nobody's going to catch him. He puts the Rams back in this football game. Keith Willis really put the wood to Jeff Kemp. I don't think Kemp saw the reception, but one of the first persons over to congratulate Jeff Kemp, Vince Ferragamo. 5.55 left in the third period. We'll be back in right foot of Mike Lansford as he gets set to kick off. Todd Spencer back for the Steelers. Spencer at about the three. So Todd Spencer, who fumbled the ball, had it to go out of bounds, and because the Steelers were the last team to have possession, they maintained possession, first and ten at their own 44-yard line. Todd Spencer shows some speed. The wall is forming outside. Spencer thinks about going in, and this watch right there. That's the move that gets him by the first wave. He brings it up the field. Here he's trying to evade, hit from behind, coughs up the ball, the mad scramble. Watch it here. It's kicked out of bounds. Steelers get it. First and 10 at their own 44. A 40 yard kickoff return. Toss back to Elton Beals. Elton Beals up across the 45 yard line. Tackle there made by Leroy Irvin and Reggie Doss. You know, it's really amazing. John how a big touchdown by the home team and all of a sudden the visiting team can really silence the crowd. Deafening silence. As a defensive back, you're told when a quarterback's scrambling to stay back, but they don't do that. Steeler defensive backs, Wayne Woodruff and company, is caught right there, the touchdown. Second and eight. Ball at the 46-yard line of the Steelers. They lead the Rams by three, 17-14. Here comes the blitz. Over the head of Lewis Lips. Gary Green on the coverage there. And there is a flag on the play. And you get the feel, Jim, that this Los Angeles Rams team feels that they have a shot at it after that big play. Ben 
defensive holding, number 61. Blake Wingle, again called for a holding. That's his third penalty, his third holding penalty this afternoon. I was thinking, as we talked to John Robinson yesterday, John, he told us, you know, sometimes you, you really need to win when it's apparent, or not apparent, but when most people think you're going to lose. They did the same thing last week against the Cleveland Browns. You go in, you lose your starting quarterback, similar situation. He's a motivator, and he believes that adversity can bring out the best in a ball player, and certainly the Rams are facing that right now without their starting quarterback trailing 17-14. Second and 18. Inside handoff to Aaron Bird, and he's smothered there by Jim Collins and Greg Meisner. Early in the game, the Rams defense was sitting back on their heels, letting the Steeler offense bring it to them. Now that's all changed. It's a change in attitude. What they are saying right now, Youngblood Meisner and Doss are saying, we're coming after you. Now let's see what you can do. Greg Meisner, in his fourth year, he played right here at the University of Pittsburgh. A young man who has made major contributions to this Rams defensive unit, and you know he wants to play well in front of the home folks. How many tickets did he order? Something around 98 tickets he had for this game. He had to pay for all of them. <laughs> Third and 18. Woodley goes back to pass. The blitz is on. Good protection. Complete the job, Stoller. George Andrews and Mel Owens in on the tackle. John Stallworth, good for 24 yards in a first down. And Woodley is a timing quarterback. He throws that ball before the receiver's cut. He's not like a Bradshaw with a real strong, great arm. Here, Stallworth playing as well as he did back in the mid-70s, comes across. Interesting that Nolan Cromwell does not hit him, and he gets back up to make a few extra yards. The Steelers have the ball first and 10. The Ram 40-yard line. And Woodley's back to pass again. Pressure from Meisner, and Mel Owens comes over to make the sack. Good coverage in the secondary by the Rams. Woodley scrambling around, getting away from Meisner, but Mel Owens, number 58. That's the first time that we have heard from, uh, from Mel Owens this afternoon. First round draft choice from uh, Michigan. It's the second sack of the afternoon, and that's the kind of pressure. Actually, it was great coverage by Gary Green on Lewis Lips that allowed that. You take a look at it again. Here he's chased out of the pocket. He's still looking. You see Lips down there, number 83. Well, he's being bumped around by number 27, Green. Finally, the rush gets to Woodley. Loss of three, second and 13 from the Ram 43-yard line. David Woodley, quarterback for the Steelers. Mixed up in the backfield, and Woodley manages to pick up a couple of yards. Turned around and looked for Elton Beals. Beals wasn't there. Tackle there made by Nolan Cromwell. So David Woodley trying to maintain and keep this drive going. It'll be third down and about nine and a half yards to go. Pittsburgh on third down conversions, hitting half of them, four of eight. Weezy Thompson in now for the Steelers. Woodley goes over the middle, and it looked like his arm was hit right as he tried to release the ball. Number 69, Greg Meisner in, and just making a little disturbance in the backfield. So the Steelers, because of the incompletion, will have to punt. Again, the Ram defense shuts down the Steeler offense. So the Ram defense is helping to set the tone here, and the offense responded last time with a long touchdown pass. You saw... Uh, Woodley there hitting his uh, right arm, indicating that it was hit. Colquitt in to punt. Good high kick. And the ball goes out of bounds at the 10-yard line of the Rams. So that's where the Rams will take over first and 10 from their own 10-yard uh, line. Other scores this afternoon, Tampa Bay in the third quarter leading, or rather trailing Detroit, 17-14. New Orleans over San Francisco, 20 to 17 in the fourth period. The Giants leading Washington, 14 13 in the fourth quarter. My goodness, are the Giants actually for real? Whew. And the question is, what happened to Washington? 
first and ten for the Rams at their own ten yard line. Jeff Kemp in replacing Vince Ferragamo, the injured Ferragamo. James McDonald in motion. Hand off to Eric Dickerson. Eric Dickerson picks up a couple of yards before he's tackled there by Ed Nelson. Robin Cole also in on the tackle. So Eric Dickerson having a tough day struggling to get loose but the Steelers who pride themselves on defense and they always have throughout the years and particularly when they go up against a great running back are playing good defense this afternoon. Second and seven for the, for the Rams at their own 13 yard line. Dickerson the lone setback. And he goes back to pass with that is Jeff Kemp. Throws it over everyone as he feels pressure. The only person even close is number 31, Donnie Shell. You just saw John Robinson there. You, heard, you If you could read his lips, he said, good job, good job. You see Vince Ferragamo to the left there with the jacket on and the ice pack on his right hand. And that's been the story this afternoon. Vince Ferragamo breaking the pinky on his right hand. He's gone for the day, and who knows how much longer. Now that job belongs to Jeff Kemp. And he has a big job in front of him. As the Rams trail 17-14. Kemp goes back to pass. A draw play to Eric Dickerson. Flag on the play as Dickerson gets across the 15 to about the 16-yard line. John Goodman and David Little in on the tackle. to play in Pittsburgh. Sold out crowd. You hear them coming alive. So the non-existent, supposing non-existent running game of the Steelers has been a major, major portion of their offensive attack today. And with that, the rookie, Rich Ehrenberg, has played a, has, has come up with a gallant effort. Stadium is jumping right now as the Steelers open up the fourth quarter on the Rams 15-yard line leading 
David Woodley at quarterback for Pittsburgh. A handoff to Ehrenberg in the backfield. And after a little bit of a mix-up, Rich Ehrenberg gets down inside the 15-yard line. Tackle made by George Andrews and Carl Eckert. It's interesting, last week they had a couple of fumbles between veteran Mike Anderson, and here, just the exchange, Woodley turns one way, Ehrenberg comes right into him, the collision, no gain. Third down, and one. Third and about one. The Steelers have two tight ends now, Benny Cunningham and Chris Wojewski. Hand off to Ehrenberg. First down and then some. Gary Green in on the tackle for the Rams. Give credit to Benny Cunningham, Larry Brown, Blake Wingle on that one. They just move the Ram defensive line back. Ehrenberg makes the first down. Los Angeles, 10-yard line. Just saw Woodley mention something to, uh, to Lewis Lips as they were coming back into the huddle. Woodley so far in the second half, three of nine. First and ten, ball at the ten-yard line. Woodley back to pass. just got through saying that Woodley mentioned something to a Lewis Lips as they were coming back into the huddle. That's the result. Well, Lips already had three touchdowns for the year. There he gets another one, but the reason he was able to do it so easily is that Gary Green went down on the carpet. He's still down so that Lips was wide open. And it looks like the injury is to Green's knee. Now, earlier uh, in the year, I think it was about the first regular season game, uh, Green sustained a knee injury where he twisted his knee. In practice this week, he was complaining, saying that it was a little sore and that he couldn't run on it as well as he would like to. Gary Green, one of the fine cornerbacks in all of professional football, a pro bowler for three straight years. And Many people talk about him, excuse me, Jim, in the same breath with Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes from the Raiders. He's one of the fine ones. He's limping off the field. Gary Anderson in to attempt the extra point conversion. Good. But what a time to hurt yourself. Not only is it you, are you out for the game, Gary Green, but you also give up a touchdown and put your team behind 24 to 14. Take a look at this. Third game in a row, a little pump fake. Sees he's wide open. See Green on the ground right there. Lips holds it in for the touchdown. And this rookie is something very, very special. Well, when they talk about Lewis Lips, they talk about this, the great Lynn Swan. And he's come through in great fashion today. The Steelers leading the Rams 24-14. Some very impressive statistics for the rookie, Lewis Lips. 75 yards, five receptions, including the touchdown pass. It's interesting when I asked David Woodley about Lewis Lips, who would he compare him to? He said he's much like Super Duper in Miami, that kind of ability. He's been super this afternoon. If Anderson kicks off for the Steelers. Drew Hill, about eight yards in the end zone, decides to down it there. And the Rams will take over first and ten from their own 20-yard line. The scoring drive for the Steelers, four plays, 24 yards. They had the ball two minutes and 11 seconds, capped off by the 11-yard touchdown pass from David Woodley to Lewis Lips. The Rams and Jeff Kemp have their work cut out for him. Kemp on the afternoon through seven passes, completed four of them for 92 yards. Of course, the big TD pass to Hill. First and 10 now for the Rams at their 20-yard line. Eric Dickerson, the lone setback for Los Angeles. And Kemp goes back to pass. Complete to Mike Gooman, driven out of bounds by Sam Washington. So the Rams are not going to go into their shell. They're going to stay right out there. They trail 24-14, and they're going to do it behind Jeff Kemp, who has replaced Vince Ferragamo. Scores this afternoon, Tampa Bay trailing Detroit 17-14 in the fourth period. 
San Diego over Houston, 28 to 7. It is San Francisco leading New Orleans by four in the fourth period. And the Giants, they trail now Washington, 23 to 14 there. And Dallas over Philadelphia, 23 to 10. Second and three for the Rams. Pitch back to Dickerson, feeling pressure. Dropped by Gary Dunn. And Dickerson last night talk about, talking about how discouraging it was when he saw all those defenses putting eight and nine men up on the line of scrimmage. And that's what the Steelers are doing now. They're creeping up because they know Eric Dickerson is a big play man for the Rams. But the Rams have another weapon, and he's been in the game, Ron Brown, number 89, of course, the Olympics uh, sprinter. If you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, no team has rushed for 100 yards or more this year, including preseason. They are tough against the rush. Ron Brown, the Olympic gold medalist, has checked in. Third and three. And Kemp is back to pass. Interception. However, Brown was behind him. The ball was thrown just too short. That's what allowed uh, Rick Woods to come over and make the interception. There's such a thing as being too fast and outrunning the ability of your quarterback to throw the ball. Ron Brown with that blazing world-class gold medal speed downtown. The ball is underthrown. He is behind Rick Woods, as you mentioned, but Kemp just can't get him the ball there. The ball travels about 55 yards in the air. Woods goes up to the height to pull it down. Pittsburgh Steelers get the ball back. So after the interception by Rick Wood, the Steelers take over at their own 29-yard line. First and 10, we'll be back. Next Saturday, an exciting college football game as top-ranked Nebraska goes against UCLA. The Bruins trying to get back to the Rose Bowl to make it three consecutive Rose Bowl victories. Both teams winners yesterday. Nebraska over Minnesota. Big UCLA over Long Beach State in a close one. The fans wanting their amazing Steelers to come back and strike again. First and ten. The Steelers 24-yard line. David Woodley is back to pass. Good protection. And he's going deep for John Fowler. <laughs> Nolan Cromwell, an obvious pass interference. Cromwell had no idea where the ball was, just ran right into Stallworth. An obvious pass interference. And the Steelers will have the ball first and 10 at the Ram 30-yard line. Interference 21 at the first down. And a, and a penalty of some 46 yards. Nolan Cromwell just lost sight of the ball. The ball took a long time to get there. See Cromwell trying to make up ground and help number 47, Leroy Irvin. He goes up and hits Stallworth long before the ball gets there. First and 10 at the 30. John Stallworth and Lewis Lips, the receivers for the Steelers. And Woodley's back to pass. Going into the end zone, here's John Stallworth! Knocked away at the last second by Nolan Cromwell, who really should have intercepted. I don't know where Cromwell's concentration is, but he should be reading the quarterback. That time, Woodley looked all the way. Cromwell had the deep zone. And that's you're talking about an NFL Defensive Player of the Year in 83. And there is a penalty flag that's been thrown. Take a look at it again. He gets pretty good protection. He comes right back. Plenty of time for Cromwell to get there. Could have had the interception, but doesn't. He really should have. Once again, holding against the Steelers and once again against number 61, Blake Wingle. Well, one of the things that uh, Chuck Noll has been worried about is that his offensive line has not been consistent, not come together. First and 20 for the Steelers. The ball at their 40-yard line of the Los Angeles Rams. 12-13 to go in this period. Mixed up. But Woodley falls on the ball. I'm surprised to see things like that happen because Mike Webster, 11 years, the center, and David Woodley, an experienced quarterback, and they haven't had any problems, but... Rem but remember, remember, we were talking to them yesterday, and they said that it was last week 
they had a similar situation because uh, Webster, instead of turning the ball and giving it to Woodley, he was snapping the ball with the point coming up uh, the way, you know, point first. Because he was so excited, he yeah. got carried away in the game. Webster's a great center. Rich Ehrenberg gets to the outside. Tackle there made by Gary Green, who has returned after uh, leaving when the touchdown pass was thrown to Lewis Lip. So Gary Green, we are told, suffered an ankle injury, twisted his ankle somewhat. It has been retaped, and the all-pro defensive back is back in the game. In the four yards, third down, and 18. Ouija Thompson checks into the ball game for the Steelers. 11-19 left to go in the ball game. The Steelers leading the Los Angeles Rams, 24 to 10, or rather 24 to 14. And the Steelers with three wide receivers. And Woodley's back to pass again. And he's sacked by Reggie Doss. Woodley. The, the third That's sack. Reggie Doss. No Ooh. one blocked Reggie Doss from the out from the backside, number 71. Take a look on the outside. You see number 52 coming there. Linebacker. That's George Andrews. It's a game. They pick up the linebacker, but not Doss. That's the third sack. Craig Colquitt into punt for the Steelers. Leroy Irvin back, along with Henry Eller to receive for Los Angeles. And a booming high punt. Into and out of the end zone, but there is a flag on the play. Flag on the play. So a flag on the play after Colquitt punts the ball into the end zone. Ten minutes, 35 seconds left to go in the ball game. Offensive holding number 40, decline the penalty, and the cutback going the other way. Anthony Corley. He actually held Gary Green, who was coming to block the punt, and pulled him down. So with the score, the Steelers leading the Rams 24 to 14. We'll be back in just a minute. John Dockery, I'm Jim Hill. Three Rivers Stadium. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Steelers leading the Rams 24-14. First and 10 for the Rams at their own 20-yard line. Play action pass. Good protection, but it breaks down now. Good coverage in the Steelers secondary. Kemp has to run. Jeff Kemp picks up enough yardage for the first down. Tackle made by David Little. Jeff Kemp was going for Ron Brown once again, but Brown was covered in the Steelers' secondary, and he had to scramble and picked up enough yardage for the first down. The son of a New York congressman shows some good speed here. His receivers are covered. A little fake does nothing to Eric Dickerson. It's not a good one. He scrambles, finds a crack, and watch Gooman get out in front of him to make a good block. He cuts through the crack and gets a first down. The Rams have it at their own 37-yard line. Otis Grant in motion, and Kemp is back to pass again. The pass is complete to Dickerson, and Eric Dickerson is knocked out of bounds by Sam Washington. Have you ever noticed, Jim, when a quarterback backs out from the line of scrimmage, that often he's going to throw to his left side just because it gives him better vision when they back straight out versus turning and setting up? That's exactly what Kemp did. Safe pass to Eric Dickerson. Gets about five or six yards. Well, Jeff Kemp has come in and has done a fine job in replacement of Vince Ferragamo, who suffered a fractured finger on his right hand, the little finger. The Rams are down by 10 with 9.35 left to go. Eric Dickerson, the lone setback for Los Angeles. Play action pass to Dickerson. And Kemp's going long for Ron Brown again. Knocked down by Sam Washington. So time and time again, the Rams try Sam Washington, and time and time again, Washington has met the test. He has met the test. He has two interceptions, of course. The one that he made on Ferragamo for the touchdown was a, a backbreaker. Here, Brown again. The ball is underthrown. It's almost as though Brown is outrunning the quarterback's throwing ability. 
Perhaps Kemp should throw it a little sooner and let Brown run underneath it. Kemp is 6 of 11 for 104 yards, one touchdown and one interception. Otis Grant in motion for Los Angeles. And Kemp is back to pass again. Good protection. Into and out of the hands of Grant. Otis Grant tried to run before he had the ball in his hand. So for an NFL update on the Washington Redskin contest, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Jim, this has been a day of atonement for the Washington Redskins defense. Vernon Dean ran in an interception. Then Manuel, coming around on the end around, will get stripped of the ball. Let's go back now to Jim. The punt by John Misko. And it's Lewis left. He fumbles the ball. Norwood Van makes the recovery. Norwood Van, the young rookie. Comes up with a big fumble recovery for Los Angeles. Remember, not too long ago, Lips returning a punt fumble. The Steelers recovered it that time. He fumbles again, and Van recovers it. Another turnover for Pittsburgh. That's two. LA has three. Take a look at it again. Here's Lips. Perhaps he should have fair caught this ball. Rams are right on him. He's hit right there, coughs up the ball. Watch Van. Yes, Rams in good position. Mark Giroux in on the tackle causing the fumble. So the Rams, first and 10 at the Steelers, 22-yard line. They trail by 10 with 9-11 to go in the ball game. The blitz is on the toss back to Eric Dickerson. Eric Dickerson tackled by Sam Washington. Of course, Dickerson with that great vision, you have to wonder why he didn't break it outside with his great speed. Perhaps Washington had an angle on him, but it looked from here that he might have had some room down the sidelines. The Steelers were blitzing. Whew. In a five yard. They uh, need him to break something. Down and five. How about that? Pittsburgh defense. Tough scoring on them in the fourth quarter. But the Rams need one, and they need one desperately. 8.33 left to go in the ball game. Jeff Kemp. Henry Elliott is in motion for Los Angeles. And Kemp is sprinting to his right, looking for a receiver. Throws it to the end zone. Check. Check it out. This is Mike Merriweather was the first to tip the ball. Then Eric Dickerson had it go off his hands, incomplete. A good idea by the Ram offense and Jeff Kemp, though. Sprint out, get away from the pressure. Almost catch Eric Dickerson's out of the backfield. Watch here. Merriweather gets his hands on it, tips it, goes way up in the air. Dickerson has a chance. Just can't get his fingers on it. Take a look at it again. Presence of mind is what impresses me. See him standing in there, a lot of pressure. Takes a big hit after he throws the ball. Third down for the Rams. The 3 of 12 on third down conversions. And Kent goes back to pass again. Throws into the end zone. Reception out of the end zone, incomplete. Sam Washington. So what do you do now, Jim? You do what you suggest. Take the field goal, take the score, get part of those 10 points that you're trailing by, and then hope you can get the ball back and come down and score to tie. You're going to have to kick a field goal sooner or later. You certainly don't want to come away from this drive with no points at all. But there you saw one of the weaknesses of Jeff Kemp. He does not have a great strong arm. Couldn't get the ball there soon enough, so the catch was made out of the end zone. Mike Lansford in to attempt a 35-yard field goal. Nolan Cromwell to hold. The Steelers dodge the bullet. And Lansford has been four for four in the year. He misses one. So the Rams still trail by 10 points in the fourth quarter here in Pittsburgh. You fire the runaround. His wife's giving him the heave-ho, and the only woman who cares costs too much. Richard Pryor stars in Some Kind of Hero tonight. 
minutes and five seconds left in the ball game. The Steelers leading the Los Angeles Rams 24-14. Mike Lancer just missed a 35-yard field goal. The Steelers have the ball first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Pitch back to Aaron Burr. And the young rookie is tackled by George Andrews. Rich Ehrenberg, who has had tremendous success and has become somewhat of a celebrity here in the Pittsburgh area. There you look at his statistics, 16 rushes for 70 yards. Against the Jets last week, he had 60 yards, including a big play late in the game when the Jets were hoping to get the ball back. So Ehrenberg is picking up the slack for a relatively poor running game. Second and three. Ball at the Steeler, 27-yard line. And off to Veals. Veals fights his way up to about the 30-yard line. And now for an NFL report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Tim, I apologize for interrupting that action, but let me complete this now with the Washington Redskins and the New York Giants. The Redskins scored two touchdowns on defense this afternoon. Here's the second one. Curtis Jordan scoops up the fumble and runs in. Earlier, Vernon Dean had intercepted a pass. It's now 30-14. Washington's going to win for the first time this year. Let's go back to Jeff. All right, thank you very much, Brent. First and 10 for the Steelers at their own 30-yard line. Hand off to Ehrenberg again. Ehrenberg tackled by Charles Dijonet. You have to think, Jim, that uh, Washington might be on the comeback trail. The Giants having their problem. You saw Curtis Jordan pick up the fumble and run it back. Before that, Sims threw an interception. Vernon Dean ran it back for Washington. So Washington ahead of now at 30-14. to 14. And the Steelers are ahead of the Los Angeles Rams here. 24-14. to 14. Six minutes and ten seconds left in the final period. Rich Ehrenberg. An outstanding job of running today. And it goes to the young rookie again. Dances his way across the 35 to about the 36-yard line before the tackle is made by Eric Harris. Ehrenberg having a great afternoon. Perhaps he thinks he's Eric Dickerson. Third and four. Ball at the 36-yard line. And the Steelers have had their running game to really come around. Five minutes, 20 seconds left. David Woodley at quarterback. The Steelers have three wide receivers in. And Woodley's back to pass. Complete to Aaron Burke out of the backfield. Tackle made by George Andrews and Jim Collins. So while Aaron Burke may lack a little height, he certainly has a very, very big heart, and he's had an awesome afternoon. He also understands where to find the holes in the zone, and, and Woodley, to his credit, is throwing to the correct receiver. The outside receivers were covered. He just hooked up underneath the linebackers. Completion, first down. Woodley's got control of this game. Does he remind you a little bit of a young Rocky Blyer? A little bit, only he has better hands, and he's not quite as big as Rocky. 4.35 left. First and 10 for the Steelers at their 43. Hand off to Ehrenberg. Ehrenberg dropped at the 35-yard line by Carl Ecker. The Rams have to do something right now, make something happen. There's four minutes and 15 seconds left in the game. They're trailing by 10 points. The defense has to throw caution to the wind. They have to come with the blitz. They have to close down the hall. They have to try and strip the ball, make something happen so the offense can get it back and score. But another thing about the Rams is they have not taken advantage of their opportunities. They get the ball in the fumble. They don't score a field goal. They don't score a touchdown either. Second and seven, all at the 41 of the Steelers. Woodley's back to pass. Complete to Weezy Thompson. Brought down there by Gary Green, but Thompson fumbles the ball out of bounds, and the Steelers will maintain possession. Not only maintain possession, but get a first down as well. Talk about living right. That's exactly what the Steelers are doing right now. Scores in the National Football League in the fourth period. It is Tampa Bay leading Detroit. 
That's an upset. San Diego over Houston, real big. Bad day for Warren Moon there. And Washington over the Giants, 30 to 14 in the fourth period. Dallas leading Philadelphia, 23-17. And here's the Steelers over the Rams, 24-14. First and 10 at the Ram, 45. Hand off to Ehrenberg. Met there by Ecker. You know, the David Woodley story is really an amazing one, going from Miami to Pittsburgh, going from Chuck, uh, going coming to Chuck uh, Noel here, leaving Don Shula. And it was, remember the, the statement he made yesterday? People talk about when you get traded, sometimes there's a big adjustment. He says, no, it's like going from one room to another in the same home. Yeah, because the playbooks are so much alike, and that Noel and uh, Don Shula are so much alike. They're both top disciplinarians, very intense, very demanding. By the home delivering. <laughs> Second and six. Ball at the Ram, 41. The blitz is on. Complete the stall work. Driven out of bounds by Leroy Irvin. So the Steelers do an excellent job of picking up the blitz. Pass is complete to John Stallworth. And there's a, a, the poise of a David Woodley. We're just talking about it. He really took over this job. There was a bit of a, of a quarterback battle in preseason here between Woodley and Malone. But Chuck Noll told us, look, Malone, Woodley just puts points on the board and he takes over the offense and guys feel like he has control unlike Cliff Stout last year who lived in the shadow of Terry Bradshaw. That's not the case with Woodley. Three wide receivers in now for the Steelers. Third and three. Ball at the Ram at 37 yard line. Inside hand struggling trying to get every inch that he can ivory sully vince newsom george andrews in on the tackle and corley you see him clapping his hands he has made a couple of big plays on special teams and he is so happy to make a contribution now so the two minute warning has been given two minutes left in our ball game the los angeles rams are trading the pittsburgh steelers 24 14 we'll be back in just a moment bell draft Defensive back Everson Walls signed as a free agent with the Dallas Cowboys. Coming out of nowhere, he went on to lead the league in interceptions in his first two years. Everson Walls tumbles, he makes the interception. By proving to the experts that he deserved a spot on any NFL team, Everson Walls was the best he could be. Both teams, the Rams and the Steelers, have all three timeouts left. So there is a lot of football remaining with two minutes to go in the fourth period. Total yardage for Los Angeles, 285. The Steelers, the Steelers, 331. First and 10 for the Steelers at the Ram, 33-yard line. Woodley now seems like he's calling an audible. Hand off to Corley. Jim Collins at the bottom of the pile. And the Rams call the first of their three timeouts. They have two timeouts remaining. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, ER, and a great movie, Some Kind of Hero. Second down and 10. The season premiere of 60 Minutes, an all-new show of ER, and a movie, Some Kind of Hero, starring Richard Pryor. And the Steelers have had some kind of hero here this afternoon for them and Rich Ehrenberg, but there's a, a young man who has not been a hero for the Los Angeles Rams, Vince Ferragamo, who left the ball game early in the first half as he suffered a fracture on his little finger in the right hand. There's Dr. Robert Curlin there looking at it. And Ferragamo, who has had a bad start to the 1984 season, having thrown six interceptions going into today's ball game through two here before leaving with a fractured right finger on his passing hand. And you have to wonder, if you look at David Woodley's statistics, he's having an outstanding afternoon, what the Rams will do for a veteran quarterback. They only have Kemp. After that, it's Cromwell. They've got to go out and get some. A minute 54 left in the ball game. Second and 10 for the Steelers at the Ram 33-yard line. David Woodley, quarterback. Hand off to Corley. Tackle there made by Reggie Doss. And, 
and the Rams call another timeout. That means they only have one remaining. So what a great overall day for the Steelers, especially on offense. Next Sunday, there's another exciting NFL doubleheader on CBS. In the first game, you'll see either San Francisco at Philadelphia, Washington at New England, or the Rams at Cincinnati, followed by the Green Bay Packers at Dallas, or the Chicago Bears as they take on the Seattle Seahawks. It all starts with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern time, right here on CBS Sports. Look at that Chicago-Seattle game. Walter Payton today for Chicago, 110 yards. Of course, Franco Harris great star here of the Pittsburgh Steelers for so long playing for Seattle he too is chasing Jim Brown next week the battle of the running backs chasing the ghost of Jim Brown and there's Chuck Noll on the sidelines has to feel pretty good about this game when you think about the overall season they were terrible against Kansas City turnovers problems against the Jets on Thursday night they were good and they beat him 23 17 here a generous solid performance by the defense and you can watch David Woodley grow at quarterback. He's been outstanding this afternoon. Rich Ehrenberg comes out of the ball game, and he gets a nice round of applause from the Steeler fans here as Scoop Gillespie replaces him. Ehrenberg, the rookie from Colgate, an outstanding job of running today. Third and eight. All at the 31 of the Rams. And here's Corley again getting to the outside. Driven out of bounds there by Nolan Cromwell and Leroy Irvin. Trailing by 10, 24-14. About to lose their second game of the young season. Lost their starting quarterback, Vince Ferragamo. But they hung in there. And they did not take advantages. They did not take advantage of the situations that really were in front of them. They had several situations and opportunities to get the ball and get some points on the scoreboard and they just did not. Woodley calls timeout. Apparently he saw something that he really timeout. didn't like from the Ram defense. First timeout. Because you know he doesn't want to call a timeout now to stop the clock. So it had to be he saw something in the Ram defense that he really didn't like. He really didn't like He didn't want a, a costly mistake, a fumble or a problem. So even though it was the clock was stopped, uh, he called a timeout to talk to Chuck Noll, find exactly what he should do in this situation. This team's ahead by 10 points. All you want to really do is sit on the ball and not turn it over. The Rams, when you think about it, have to get the ball back, score right away, and then come with an onside kick and try to score again. It's a large order, Jim. It certainly is, especially the way the things have been going for the Steelers. Other games today, here are some finals. The Vikings beating Atlanta 27-20. It's Chicago beating Green Bay 9-7. Still undefeated, the monsters of the midway. Yes, next Cubs, week. Cubs and the Bears having a big time in Chicago. The Jets big over Cincinnati by 20. And it's Kansas City. Look at this. Close, but the Raiders come back. Fourth quarter belongs to the Raiders. That's right. St. Louis defeating Indianapolis by one. to Corley, battles his way across the 35-45 yard, 35 yard line. Jim Collins in on the tackle for the Los Angeles Rams. And they'll turn the ball over to the Rams. They will have a shot at 135 left, trailing by 10 points. You got to look for them to try to go downtown to Ron Brown, or else get Dickerson in the clear for a quick score. Well, that's the only thing they can do now. Just throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. More scores, more finals. New England beating Seattle 38 to 23. San Francisco over New Orleans 30 to 20. Tampa Bay over Detroit 21-17. That game in the fourth quarter, that would be an upset if it stays like that. And another score in the fourth quarter. Washington 30 to 14 over the Giants. First and 10 for the Rams at their own 24-yard line. Kemp in shotgun formation. Good protection. Ball just short of Henry Ellard, and there is a flag on the play. You look at the situation for the Los Angeles Rams, and you know that Kemp is not the answer if you're trying to go to the playoff. He's too young. He's too green. You need someone as an experienced quarterback to take this veteran team where they want to go. How do you get that? It's tough going out and finding a veteran. Not too many teams want to give them up. All 
offense, illegal motion number 62. Bill Bain, the offensive tackle for the Rams. You know, when you're speculating on who the Rams might get, when you look at Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Bengals, they have Anderson, Schonert, and the rookie, Esiason, you know, Boomer out of Maryland, who they really like. So maybe one of those could be pried loose, possibly Schonert. Yeah, but, you know, I would think that they would be looking for some experience if, indeed, that's what they want to do. They don't want to go and get someone who, who has not, uh, does not have a great deal of experience. Kemp again from the shotgun. Gets away from pressure. Gets away from Merriweather. Finally tackled by Chris Brown. Other scores today in the fourth quarter. The Dallas Cowboys leading Philadelphia 23-17. San Diego over Houston, 31 to 14 in the fourth period. Flags on the play as we have a minute and two seconds left with the Steelers leading the Rams by 10. Ball start, number 62 offense. Bill Bain again. You know, we mentioned the quarterbacks at Cincinnati, Anderson, Shona, and Isaias, and of course, the Rams are in Cincinnati next week, so they're going to have to try and regroup and come up with a victory there. Cincinnati having problems. I believe they're now 0-3 after today. Second and six, ball at the 28 for the Rams. from the shotgun. Complete to Otis Grant. And Otis Grant is run out of bounds about the 35-yard line by Mike Merriweather. 55 seconds left to go in the ball game. The Rams trailing the Pittsburgh Steelers 24 to 14. And the Rams really have a lot of thinking to do now. Besides losing the ball game, they've lost their starting quarterback, Vince Ferragamo. Kemp again from the shotgun. Complete to Henry Eller. Henry Eller tackled by Sam Washington. And the third-year man from Mississippi Valley State, Sam Washington, has had what some people would call an awesome afternoon. Oh, he sure has. He's really playing well for the Steelers. Second and three. Kemp again from the shotgun. The ball is knocked out of his hands by Keith Willis. Kemp gets back and makes the recovery. Timeout. Los Angeles. Last timeout. So the Rams call their final timeout. 25 seconds to go in the ball game. And John Robinson has a lot of things on his mind right now. And John Robinson, the positive thinker, will be taxed. Coming up, the, se the season premiere. 60 minutes following our football game, except on the West Coast. John Robinson talking to Kemp. Of course, there's Vince Ferragamo on the side with the jacket on. And you have to feel the Robinson and the management of the Rams have to do some searching after this. What do you do? You need another quarterback? How do you get one? Who do you trade for? From Three Rivers Stadium. I'm John Dockery, I'm Jim Hill, rather along with John Dockery, and we welcome you, Washington Redskins, New York Giant fans, as the Redskins defeated the Giants at 30 to 14. Here, the Los Angeles Rams are trailing the Pittsburgh Steelers 24 to 14. The Rams have lost their starting quarterback in Vince Ferragamo. He suffered a fracture of his little finger on his right hand, and Jeff Kemp has come in to replace him here in the second half. The pass complete to Henry Ellard tackle there made by Sam Washington. The clock is winding down. Kemp in relief of there, the starting quarterback, Vince Ferragamo. 
Ferragamo left with a fractured right little finger early in the ball game. Jeff Kemp has come in, and the Pittsburgh Steelers continue to put pressure on as the clock runs out, and the Steelers have won their second game of the year, defeating the Los Angeles Rams as a very distraught Vince Ferragamo leaves the field. And that's really the story of this game, Jim Hill. Ferragamo's injuries changed the whole complexion of this game for the Rams. So the Los Angeles Rams, with high hopes of coming in and defeating a big-name team, suffer not only loss of their top quarterback, but all kinds of injuries and tough breaks. Another capacity crowd here in Pittsburgh. The 96th consecutive sellout. Welcome back to New York. I'm Brent Musburger. And a reminder that tonight, coming up on CBS, the premiere of 60 Minutes, just as soon as I get you through this scoring wrap-up. One game still in progress right now. About three minutes to go. The Cowboys lead the Philadelphia Eagles 23-17. to Mike Quick has cut a pair of touchdowns, 9 and 11 yards for the Eagles in that game. The Washington Redskins, as you know, they defeated the New York Giants 30-14. to That was the first victory of the season by the Redskins. Pittsburgh Steelers go to 2-1. and one. Rams drop to 1-2 and two, and two games behind the San Francisco 49ers with that loss. San Diego rolls over Houston 31-14 was the final in that AFC game. San Francisco remains unbeaten, a two-game lead now in the NFC West. 30-20, to 20, they rally and down the New Orleans Saints. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers win for the first time this season, 21-17 over Detroit. Both teams at 1 and 2. Chicago, meanwhile, has a two-game lead in the NFC Central. They remain unbeaten at 3-0, three, three field goals. They down Green Bay 9-7. And the Los Angeles Raiders also unbeaten at 3-0. They down Kansas City 22-20. Minnesota wins for the first time this year, down in Atlanta, 27 to 20. New England over Seattle, 38 to 23. The Jets beat Cincinnati, 43 to 23. And finally, St. Louis over Indianapolis, 34 to 33. So long, everybody.